is amazing. I was clash heads again. This is like Chad Moss and Cam Water. It's motorsport, but not as you know it. Test yourself and your everyday road car. Safe, affordable, but most of all, fun. And all you need is your daily driver. Experience the thrill of a sprint day. Race against the clock at a hill climb. Or test your reflexes with an auto test. It takes just three simple steps to get started. Get on the start line. Search Motorsport Australia Daily Driver today. Fishies in a row. They're here to make a point and to do Eddie proud. They fan out in the back, uh, background as they come down to turn one for the first time. It all looks pretty good. Two by two. We'll stop the, the camera here. Oh, Eddie would be proud, mate. That was awesome run around turn one. But away! Oh, Contact with the fishies! Oh, He's made it through. It doesn't look like Angus has made it, but the Thomas Freeman's made it through, and Angus is going to suffer the crowd coming through there to be able to turn his car around. I love riding. It's a real social thing. There's a great bond between riders. Every weekend, I look forward to getting out there. It's a freedom like no other. Riding to work is a great way to start the day. Shannon's ensure all types of road bikes, not just classics. They offer features riders really want. It's why they're one of Australia's leading motorcycle insurance providers. Whatever you ride. Whatever you ride. Whatever you ride. Ride with Shannon's. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. And they are off. It was a good start. From Dylan to Bono, I think Phil Bella got a great start there in the background as well. You can see already cars going five, six wide as they're trying to find any semblance of space. They're coming to T1. So far, we've got two, three wide as they snake down. It's a Michael Pinchard that's got around Dylan to Bono. A couple of cars going wide there. Was that a bit of contact yeah. in the back? Scott Pocock caught up in that, I think, there, buddy. But it's Michael Cullajar has got past, so Dylan. light is coming out and we're about to get going and we have gone green lights and a very slow start for the 86s but they are moving out there on the grid it would be very interesting to see exactly which driver can capitalize on his first lap just go through the grid look what jamie christensen had a really awesome start to get ahead of dylan de bono and doug gowage also jumped his teammate as well so unfortunately dylan stole the car a little bit more than what he preferred but Weekend in, weekend out, Motorsport Australia officials are making waves. From waving flags, waving cars through pit lane, or responding to a wave for help. Wave hello to new lifelong friends. Who knows, you might just make waves around the world. Ride the first wave. Search Motorsport Australia officials today great class as a car and if you are able to if you're coming up the ranks on iRacing through the licenses it's a fantastic sort of lane way into prototype driving going from that gt3 up through the prototype classes as the safety car pulls in we get ready to go green as we come up towards the line edwards hasler who's going to get the jump down to turn one or will any of the fishies any of the piranhas in behind them assault them down towards they're green and they're off. first lap let's go here We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Amazing, I was clash heads again. This is like Chaz Moss and Cam Waters. Almost the same situation. Better contact going down the hill. Sam Noble wants to slip on Dave Coleman now. Sam Noble. Bottle right now because uh, 
tell you what, Bruce Tanner and uh, Jamie Dyson just absolutely drove away from us. Hayden, Hayden trying to go around the outside. This is where he could have just sent it up inside, but he hasn't defended it, which is fair enough. It's very scary out there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's see if we get a good ball. Jump to God's just absolutely run it into it. Really nice move. I like the lady had the move out of the way. Good evening, sim racing fans. Welcome back to SRW TV. Tonight we jump back into the world of open wheelers for round five of our Shadow Formula One season of the Shannon's Formula Three Nationals. This is an ongoing series that runs all year following the real F1 cars and the tracks they drive at. If it's in iRacing, we drive that track. If not, we pick a substitute. This week it's the Chinese Grand Prix. It's a track that unfortunately iRacing doesn't have. So we are at Fuji International Speedway for an action sprint round tonight. It's Cowie Average Sim Racer here. I'm back with Hamish Munro. Once again, he's in front and behind the cameras covering the action. Look, only our drivers that are really serious and keen for that Shadow Series are out there, buddy. Um, it's going to be close and uh, it's going to be an interesting night. Big sprint round. Yeah, mate. Uh, great to be back, of course, here on SW TV with you, Cowie. With some F3 action. It was a big round last time out at Suzuka. Um, of course, swapping out the Chinese Grand Prix for another Asian country's uh, track in Fuji. Um, quite interesting. But I think Fuji's a great circuit. And it's a great circuit for these cars. Of course, this track was it was released with the SF24 when it came out, or with the original Super Formula, sorry, I should say, when it came out last year in Season 3. So... Um, Fuji is pretty much a mainstay for these types of cars, especially for the Japanese market of Super Formula Racing. So I think it's going to be a lot on offer for us here tonight for these drivers. Of course, a little bit of a precursor for our season ahead. Uh, starts up next week, Kerry. Round one's next Tuesday night um, for the V8 Supercars, and then we get going, rolling on for season two. So it's going to be a big night of racing for us. We had a little bit of a preview last time. Whether we're going to get the weather preview that we're, we've been hoping for here tonight is another question, but... I think it's going to be a big night of racing, and it's going to be interesting to see who the major players are going to be. Of course, you know, Daniel Byrne, David Gallo. David Gallo, defending champion of the F3 series. Daniel Byrne, the defending Formula 1 Shadow Series champion. We've got Dylan DeBono out there as well, Dougie Gowans. So many different players on hand who can give us a good little preview of who is going to be the major players for that championship going forward into Season 2, and who could also be the major players in this championship going forward throughout the rest of this year. Of course, suddenly Round 5. There are 19 rounds to go after tonight for this championship. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all plans out. That's it. There are a few um, names that we got to have a chat to for the last round of the Shadow Series. This will be the second race that we've had in between our regular seasons. And it was good to have a chat to a few uh, newer guys that had a couple of big uh, moments in that race. Sprint round here at Fuji, as you said, it is a track that's well suited these sort of cars look it's a track that's fun in just about every car it's quite technical got those big braking zones so i'm sure we're going to see quite a few moves it's going to be interesting as you know as we've still got these guys you know coming to grips with the new car the weather as you said i think talking with the boys before they said it's scheduled to rain after the race maybe the rain gods might bring that forward a little bit for us but we'll have to see how it plays out. We might have to do a little bit of a rain dance here in the broadcast booth <laughs> to try and get it going. Interestingly enough, going into tonight's race, looking at the current practice session as well, fastest amateur on track, Dean Sinkovic. He's the only AM to get into the 33s, and he was saying he wasn't able to match his 33.91 that he'd got earlier in the session. Last lap round, he hit a 33.97, so Dean is finally finding some pace in this car, and he could be a major player in that AM championship going forward into next season. We'll have to see if he can keep that cleanliness about him, though, and just keep that consistency about him, too, which actually helped Mark Cochran last season, his consistency, and then helped him move up into the Pro-Ams. Also, this will be Steven Sinkovich's last race before he takes a, a hiatus from racing next season as well due to him moving house and not having his uh, his rig at his disposal, similar to my, to my situation. Um, maybe he'll give us some spins. I oh, know, excuses. Maybe he'll give us some spins to send him off in. Um, but, yeah, so... We, we got some, some repeat offenders out there. We'll say not repeat offenders, but more like, you know, our repeat drivers. You know, these are all drivers we've seen last season in the field here tonight. 19 drivers have signed up for the session at the moment. We could hit 20. We've got a minute to go until qualifying. It's a 
sprint round format though. So when that 15 minutes is up in quali, that's it. They gotta get the lap done very, very early as we've constantly mentioned, Cowie. So if they're gonna do it, they've gotta try and stay on track and they've gotta try and stay clean just to get the fuel out of the car, get the tires up to temp and then get the best out of that car that they can during this upcoming qualifying session. Well, it's one of the things that the practice session times can be a little bit erroneous. Not all the time, but, you know, the, the during practice, it doesn't count an off-track and um, and delete your lap. So, you know, you could have a, a lap time up in practice that, you know, cut some corners there, as long as you didn't get a slowdown. I mean, the, the other thing that, you know, you've got to keep in mind is this is a fixed series. So when they all go out, they're on full tank loads that's set for the race. When you're in practice, I mean, you can you know, burn that down and then do a bunch of laps at the end of the practice session on a really light fuel. In quali, well, they've only got 15 minutes, you know. I don't think these cars are going to burn more than about 1.4 or 1.5 a lap. So, you know, is five or six litres going to make a big difference to the time? I don't think so. So these times here will be raw pace once they get the tyres up to temp. So, and that's the major thing, get your tyres up to temp. This circuit is one that it can chew away your tyres very easily because of all the different elevation changes and the, the off to on camber corners as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers play that that game of look after the tyres throughout the session, but also maximising their fuel runs as well throughout this qualifying too. So quite interesting to see who can actually get the uh, the benefit of this. If you know, let, let's get some predictions in Cowie. Number one. Who do you think is possibly going to uh, pit pole here tonight for us in qualifying? Number two, our, our always special uh, safety car prediction as well. Well, I was first going to mention those curbs. It looks like the 3D curbs are all here in effect, so that may well be an issue too of people using the overusing the curbs to hurt their tyres. Look, I mean, at the moment, the Carlins Motorsports boys um, uh, seem to have a, not, not a stranglehold, but they are showing through pace they're working together well as a team so where the opportunity for a little bit of a toe is in play you can see already here you know Bird and Gallo at it um, together on track taking advantage of the toe of the car in front but making sure you know that um, you know Bird is also giving Gallo a nice toe as well look at that close in so you might well see Daniel bail out of this lap um, if uh, David gets close to him because it's like he's got a great run down that straight so you, you ducked the question though, Cowie. Who do you reckon we're going to get on pole? Uh, look, I think at the moment, I think it's going to be Gallo. He's shown, he's shown great pace. He is our uh, Season 1 champion. Uh, so, you know, he's right in the hunt. Um, I'm not going to write off uh, Daniel Byrne as well. And I think, you know, Dylan DeBono is another one of those guys that could just pull out a lap. Uh, you know, what he needs to. But I think it will be Gallo. Um, as for the safety car question, it's a sprint round tonight. Big open spaces here at Fuji. But I'm going to say we're going to get one tonight, I think. Stolen my answer on the safety car one there, Kerry. That's all fine. I'm going to... Oh, carry... you said one. No, that's no, right. No. You did get him with a one. No, you got no, him with a one. I've got to pick something no, else. No, I didn't say so that's that's right. what you... you said it first, so that's your answer. Okay. Um, I, had, oh, I had it mentally stocked in. I'll say oh. that I think tonight we're going to get... Zero safety cars. I'm going to go right, for the well, old donut. We're going to get zero. Um, uh, that's an answer I can never give. I yeah. think as a common player. Yeah, um, um, <laughs> I just I don't trust Fuji to give us safety cars. To be honest, pole position. Um, I'm going to go a little bit left of field, possibly, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit left of field. I'm going to go Dylan Bono. I think he's had some pace about him. Um, he's always been on the cusp of you know getting into a championship run, but has missed races prior. Look at this, already goes P2, so I think Cabrano is going to be my man for tonight to get that pole position, but we will wait and see who is going to get the top of the timing sheets in this qualifying session. Currently, it is Daniel Byrne with a 133.46. Currently, our top seeded Pro-Am driver in qualifying is Bradley Hudson, just up the road from him with a 134 dead. The top uh, seeded amateur, it was Callum Ross and Eda, but now it is Greg Johnson with a 136.04, but those times will come down, of course, uh, throughout this qualifying session, but... Yeah, Burn on top at the moment, um, and he is still giving that toe to Gallo, but Gallo is yet to set a time. He must have copped an off track on that last run. Well, when I was talking about Gallo closing in down the straight, I thought he went a bit wide there in T1, so maybe he's done the same thing. Might 
Oh, look, they're keeping a good gap at the moment. It's it's hard to say. The, the drivers have said that you know that the um, the toe um, is quite effective in these cars, just as it has been in the, the the previous version, the F3. But not having that top line speed that the F3 had means that the, you know, maybe the toe can play an even bigger part. It's a big long straight down the front here at Fuji. Well, when you can look at it, it it's almost I think it's almost a K long. Um, is the actual just the straight uh, but at the moment Mr. Byrne has gone purple in the first has not bested though his second or third sector he stays P2 Dougie Gowans goes P3 or P4 now as David Gallo goes up to pole position pipping Scott Pocock there who had just gotten past Byrne but to Bono now gets past his velocity teammate in Gowans and up into P4 so the top five already starting to seed themselves in and they're the top five that we kind of expected to be there here tonight with uh, with who's out in the field. Yeah, look, I had a great chat with Scott um, the last round there at Suzuka, and um, he's starting to have a, a, a good run. And, uh, you know, he said got a bit of bad luck last season in a couple of situations, some of his own making and others, you know, not of his making. Um, it is quite a uh, competitive mid-pack here um, for SRW. But uh, at the moment, Scott P2, so he's uh, sticking his nose out uh, near the front at the moment, and that's where he wants to be. Dean Singovich yet to set a timer in qualifying. We might hop on board with him here, just following around for this lap. He set an absolutely gorgeous lap in practice. I've checked it out um, prior to us going live. It was 133.91, as I mentioned. And it was just a perfect, like, it was a perfect lap, Cowie. It was so smooth. He hit every apex. There was one sector, though, where he he could have gained more pace. And it's through this corner here. He just doesn't carry quite as much as the other drivers. And I reckon he could gain at least half a second through there if he can find the pace through that corner. But he's, he's looking nice tonight. He, and he, if he can keep it clean, as I mentioned, he could be a contender for that AM win um, later in this race. But... This is one of the more difficult parts of the circuit, isn't it? This little chicane. Uh, I think we're both in the mindset, Carrie, that the better layout of this circuit is one without the chicane, but it does add a nice little challenge to the drivers out there. Well, I, I, I don't mind the chicane. It's quite tricky. Um, it also turns it into another sort of passing opportunity there just before it as well. So, I mean, look, this track has got a lot to, um, to you know, to love. The one thing you don't like about this track is those yellow, yellow sausage curbs. They are horrible. And, uh, you know, the former F3 would break if it looked at them too hard. These super lights here are not going to be much better. So stay off the yellow sausage curbs. Well, Dean goes P1 for the amateurs with a 134.24. So he just pips Keegan Caldwell up to the top step for qualifying here for the AMs. Brad Hudson still not really under fire from the Pro-AMs in, in the session of Martin Walker, Matty Gerrard and Sam Catacazinos as well as Callum Hodgkinson but David Gallo, he leads the way at the moment, Kerry. So at the moment your prediction is right and my prediction Dylan De Bono is not too far off him with a 132.9. Yeah. Yeah, three, three hundredths of a second. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty close as it always is here. I reckon if they get the same guys. time, we're both right. <laughs> well, it doesn't work out that way. It's who gets it Well, first, they're both on the it? front row if they get the exact same goes, time anyway. It, yeah, but if it goes down to the zeros, that's, that's yeah. always the guy that gets it first. Uh, that's very true. Dougie Gowans, though, goes P3. Daniel Byrne, P1 with a 132.8. Phenomenal time there from the Carlins Motorsport driver, defending champion of the F1 Shadow Series. Of course, to be able to differentiate them on track. Uh, Daniel has the little the little yellow ring around his air intake, and uh, David has nothing. It's just red, so it just matches his livery. So that's how we can tell the difference on their cars. And as a broadcast carrier, I know, especially for you who sometimes struggles to learn liveries after a, you know takes a little bit of time, it at least helps us differentiate the drivers who are running the exact same paint on their car. Yeah, you mean when the drivers sabotage me by changing their liveries? <laughs> that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is always helpful to have little symbols. I mean, F1 can be difficult sometimes too when you've only got a helmet to work on. So, well, you know, when I, they I know put little some teams things do, on the cars, uh, it helps. Some of them do yeah. this as well, which is cool to see. Uh, Jack Oz in the chat saying, needs more v Vel Turbo flutter slash dose. Well, I know the, uh, the SF23, the full-size one, has got a nice little turbo flutter about it. I'm not sure about the old lights. Maybe we can hear it here off our little... 
right rear suspension cam. Uh, not as much. I think these things there. rev that high, do they? Jump on the ca Can we see some revs in the cabin? From the driver's view? I'll be interested to see what's going on. So, yeah, so they're only hitting about 7,000 RPM, are they? Yeah, for the shift. That's right, so, you know, again, I mean, what? The, uh, what was the W? Was the W12 that was in iRacing the, uh, oh, the Merc. That, but, for the Merc and you know, but it was it was you know getting about 11,000 RPM, I think. Yeah. So, you know, so just uh, you know, a difference between you know F1 and, and F3s, with super lights, but yeah, don't have that scream. I mean, you know, we all want to go back to the 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 sound of the you know the the V12 McLarens and that from the Senna era, like, you know, when you've got a car that screams down the straight, that, that I sounds can, amazing. Um, I can appreciate <laughs> iRacing doing a custom 2022 spec F1 car with the V10 engine in it. Oh. Oh, just giving us what we want. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. I was watching something on YouTube the other day of a guy racing in one of the uh, uh, European rallies. And he worked out that um, for the certain, uh, I can't remember what category it was, but he could have up to a, you know, 3.5 naturally aspirated engine. So he went out there and said, okay, so what's the fastest? Oh! oh. <laughs> I was going to say before, Dougie, he found the sausage curb. And then unfortunately for Mr. Byrne and Mr. Geller, they had nowhere to go on the back of that one. But this might now help Dylan DeBono. If he can get a toe off somebody... He's on that, you know, it's slightly older rubber, but he is on the lighter fuel load. This could give him a much better run. He is lining up behind his teammate, Matty Gerrard, here for a nice run in the well, final couple of minutes. Well, uh, you know, Burn and Gallo out now. They're not going to have a chance to go out, get the tyres up the temp. Uh, maybe if they went out straight away, they might get it done. But remember, it's a sprint round, so the moment the 15 minute of quality ends, that's the end of the session. So that may well mean that it's going to be uh, De Bonos, Pococ, those sort of guys that are going to have one last chance while the Carlin Motorsports guys are probably going to have to rest on their laurels. Well, Gallo's still out there. He hasn't actually come in. It was only Burn and Gowans that had come in, but Gowans coming back out on track now. But I saw De Bono pulling up before. Maybe he's just letting some traffic past him. Check out saying airborne off the forbidden glizzy. Yeah. Now, to finish my story I was talking about anyway, so about this guy in the, uh, the rally that found... You know, the, look, uh, basically a loophole in the rules saying, you know, you can have the, uh, you know, up to, I think it was 3.5 litre naturally aspirated engine. So he went out there and said, okay, what's the, uh, you know, the best sort of engine I can get? What's the most powerful engine I can get that fits those specs? And he found it in a Ferrari. So it's got, it's this Subaru rally car racing around with a Ferrari engine in it, and it just sounds amazing. That's cool. <laughs> I remember someone, yeah. um, someone did a... I think it was a, an 8.6 or, a, or a, an S15, something like that. And they put a Ferrari motor in it. And it was just insane. Oh. It was a drift car. And it was insane. They ended up crashing <laughs> on a mountain road into an embankment. So it wasn't written off, but um, well, it was insane. This guy apparently sort of did it all within the rules. So, it, 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 you know, it's within the rules of the category. Um, it's just that, you know, every other, you know, you know what a Subaru sounds like. <laughs> and then you've got the squeal of this sort of V10 Ferrari. <laughs> you know, oh, it just sounds amazing. But, yeah, look, we long for those days of, um, you know, the the Senna's uh, machine, that McLaren, what, V12, was it? Just an amazing sounding machine. Even the V10s from that era sounded awesome as well. Yeah, because Senna had both the twin turbo was part of both the twin turbo era and the V12 era, the end of the V12 era. Uh, Dylan DeBona, though, gets a run past his teammate Dougie Gowns to cross the line. Is he going to go better? He doesn't. So one and a half minutes left in qualifying carry. They're only really going to be able to have one more run at this. Although I don't think DeBona is actually going to be able to get home in time. So it's looking like it's going to be Daniel Burns' pole position to lose at this point. He for some reason, he's coming out on track, but he won't have any time to set a time here. That's no, a practice start, I think he's doing. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So it's all up to David Gallo to get on to pole position. He hopes to try and uh, beat this. What about the Ferrari 599 Formula Drift Car? Oh, that thing is also insane as well. Yep. Oh. You just got to love those sounding machines. Oh, you know I, mean? I know. Uh, There's actually an interesting um, 
release that iRacing put out on YouTube this week where they, I think it's the Sounds of Rain, yeah. where they sort of went through how they were working out to, you know, get those sounds. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, look, this is motorsports. We want to hear those things roar. And I think it's one of the things that, you know, F1 has sort of lost and they've sort of thought of ways to try and get it back with the, these eco engines. You just don't have things running, you know, in the high teens of revs anymore, so it's not getting that squeal. Well, Dylan DeBono is going to finish his lap. He's gone fastest in the second sector. Or was the first sector fast enough and was the third fast enough here for him to have to finish this time? Uh, oh, he just oh, wasn't close enough. Oh, <laughs> what could have been from Dylan there, but it is a Did wild end of qualifying for us to go into our first heat race of the night before we get into our feature later on. So 20 minutes here in this next race. Speaking about Frankenstein cars, just quickly carry before we get our grid up here. Um, there, I found a video of uh, someone found a junked Ferrari and he put an S14 and uh, front end on it and then put a uh, Mazda RX-7 motor into it. So Every it was a Ferrari. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So it was... Oh it was it, it was written off, so the front end had been crashed, so the engine was kaput. So he just oh, I'll put a Mazda engine, and it's cheaper. Yeah, but but. When did he get assassinated? Because he's offended sort of most of the <laughs> gods of uh, motorsports by with that you know decision. Well, hopefully our starting grid hasn't offended anyone here tonight. It's Daniel Byrne and David Gallo making up a Carlin's Motorsport front row lockout here, out at Fuji Speedway. It's and Dylan Devoto and Dougie Gowans lining up on the second row of the grid there, both for Velocity Sim Lab. Scotty Pocock coming in in P5 for Red Rocket Racing. Matty Gerrard will then start pole position for the Pro-Ams. Ahead of P2 in Brad Hudson out of P7. With Marcus Kanitska, sorry, in P8 here tonight. Callan Hodgson and Dean Singovich will then make up the top 10 here in qualifying. Dean managed to get home P1 in the amateurs. He'll start ahead of Matt Tessiero and Keegan Caldwell in behind him here on the starting grid here tonight. Uh, in behind them, we have got Callum Rasanita. And Greg Johnston with Steve Sinkovich making up the top 15 with Martin Walker alongside Kevin Wakefield, uh, Nick Schmalenberg, Sam Catechizinos, and then our uh, race controller, Thomas Freeman, in here for us tonight. So should be a good night of racing for us here, Cowie. And again, just going to give us a nice little preview for the upcoming season uh, in these cars. And it's going to be so good to see these cars running week after week. We're going to have 10 weeks, unless there's an F1 round right after the end of the season. That'll make it 11 weeks, but we're going to have 10 weeks of these cars in a row uh, starting here tonight. So it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. We'll see how these things go. Scott Pocock starting out of P5, as I mentioned. Um, Phil Vela saying Turn 1 should be exciting. Oh, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen at Turn 1. Um, Jack Oz was saying, if you can choose anything about I racing, what would you choose? And why would it be the Aussie racing car? Uh, I agree with you, Jack. The Aussie racing car would be awesome to see. Um, I am also would like to see, you know, maybe Surface Paradise... <laughs> Um, or even, um, you know, uh, the Melbourne GP track would be awesome too. Well, for a car, I agree with Phil about the Bentley GT3 car. It'll never get added, but I wish it would. Um, I think as well, uh, for a circuit, there's so many, but I think the two that I want so bad is Berno and then um, also the uh, Argentinian Grand Prix circuit that they run in uh, MotoGP. Both those tracks are absolutely phenomenal uh, race circuits. I've mentioned them so many times, I'm just kind of waiting for them to tick over and roll into iRacing, but yeah, for a, for an older car, definitely well, the uh, the Bentley, but... Uh, hopefully Fukukawa is coming pretty soon too, because, you know, that's got to be a fair way in through its development. We've also, got, no, we've also got Navarro coming as well, mm -hmm. um, and P yeah, Pukukawa, um, we would assume coming out with the Gen 3 whenever that releases. Um, but gridding, everyone apart from Hodgkinson and Catacazinos have hopped onto the grid. Um, so we will wait for those boys to hop onto the grid and then we'll be getting ready to go racing here for the first time around Fuji in the SF24. couple little stats for you just quickly before we get the race started, of course. We have raced here previously, Cowie. Um, Is we... that fog going to give us um, that rain that we're all... Nah, it's not... Maybe, maybe. Oh, who's that? That's... Tessio Aero, I think there, maybe. Green was it? Green no. Flag. 169. Is the 169? That was Matty Gerard. Had got a little bit uh, motion on the line there, so hopefully he was able to pull that up and not get the iRacing black flag. There's one thing race control will tell you, they won't uh, clear that. 
Oh, there's a fair bit of congestion at the back there. Phil saying turn one was going to be interesting. Well, there it was. But it looks like they've settled down now and uh, already going four and five wider places. Yeah, they're, they've kind of settled down just a little bit here, but we can never speak too early with the open wheel of madness that we get brought to us on Wednesday nights here, thanks to the SF24 and the Formula 3 Nationals. Everyone just filing on through now, just trying to keep their cool, keep their heads nice, clear, and uncongested. I think, you know, this track is, it is a track of pure attrition, Cowie. Just trying to stay consistent, stay clean. And again, look after those tyres, look after that fuel load as well, and just make sure that you can get your moves done before you attempt anything on another driver. You don't want to be overzealous around here because it can end in tears very easily. And it's going Hudson having a good go there for what's that for? Uh, fifth, uh, sixth and seventh. A nice little battle there in the mid pack. I think. Oh, oh it's, that's that's gone, it's gone. Was there contact there? We don't know, but we'll have to have a look at that. Oh, it's contact at the back there too. Who's that? Schmalenberg and Wakefield. Yep. Oh, hopefully, it doesn't look like too much body parts lying on the road. So hopefully, there's no damage there. But I did call it. Look at that. Uh, is that Matty Gerard looks like he has picked up a iRacing black flag for a false start. Coming into the pits to serve it then. Now we'll have a look to see what happens. So it looks like he just lost it himself, did he? Uh, yeah, I believe it was. Let's just have a look here. I was just trying to get on the car in behind him. Yeah. I think it's Hutto. Sorry, yeah. we're uh, I just, just losing that issues. around. I think he may have, I think he may have caught some. Let's go on board with Hutto here. Let's see what's happened. Yeah, he's just tried to light it up through the yeah, corner there yeah, and lost it himself. A massive lock. That's just was a good little battle there we're watching. It was. And this was uh, Wakefield's incident in the background with Schmalenberg. So Schmalenberg, oh, that's Wakefield there. Oh, he's and turned down. He's not seen him there. Oh, yeah. Nowhere to go. Unfortunately. Not enough Wake Builders. He might be a single screen racer. He's sort of taken a wide angle there, and uh, um, Schmalenberg's thought that oh, this is a way up the inside, and then he's drove down. So I'll have to see if Race Control has got anything to say about that. But out front, it is Burn and Gallo for Carlin's Motorsport leading you through, and Dylan DeBono hot on their tail. His teammate. Uh, Grandpa Dougie Gowans there so trying to stay within touch. But, you know, we know that these front three have got real pace. Phil Vella chatting in the uh, in the chat there for iRacing. Uh, be interesting to see when we get you back, Bunny. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, the Carlins boys are um, controlling this race early on. Yeah, we, uh, we can only hope that we can get... We'll continue to get some challenges to some of our front runners. Uh, of course, DeBono is trying to bring the challenge to him. If we can get Vela back and the likes of Cutterjar and Dixon more consistently back as well, it'd be really, really good to see, as well as Adrian Loretti. So uh, we'll have to wait and see if they are going to be making a return to the series next season, of course. But uh, we'd love to see them out on track, especially Phil. He's, of course, he's the um, three time former champion. So it'd be good to see if he can try and get that fourth title in the brand new car going forward. And of course, anyone out there watching that wants to become a part of our league here, you can just go to simracingworld.com.au and uh, follow the links there where you can sign up and then you'll get a link to the Discord channel where uh, all the decisions are, uh, are mentioned and, uh, and join up and um, come out and have some fun with us in these uh, crazy races sometimes. Bono's starting to get close there to uh, Gallo, so starting to put on a bit of pressure. So, Cowie, one thing I will say as well is we've already beaten our previous lap record around this track um, here tonight. Previous lap record was held by Adrian the Ready, 133.246. We've already absolutely smashed that by getting into the 32s in the new cars. Only two previous winners, though, across the last three races here, those being Phil Vella, he's a two-time winner, and then Corey McFarlane as well. But look at DeBono, though, right. up the inside of Gallo, wants to get it done. He does indeed. Gallo has to give it up, and now he'll just be trying to make sure that DeBono stays as the meat in the Carlin sandwich. Although he tries to tuck it up the outside line, not quite close enough this time by. But 
the battle is starting to heat up, but it is going to allow our old friend Daniel Byrne to start to float away up the front if these guys start battling it out too hard. Alonso, or someone last week saying, um, I think it was at the Japanese Grand Prix. Now, it might have been um, Snipes up front, um, you know, saying, you know, the best spot to be was to be wedged between two teammates, and it makes them a lot harder to, to sort of pick on you. You know, whereas if you've got them both behind you, then, you know, they'll open the door for both of them to get through. So, you know, if you can't get right out front, uh, sit in the middle here, Dylan, and um, take this race long and have a go at the end. Well, it's the best thing you can do in this scenario, of course. On board now, though, with Mr. Gallo, our defending F3 champion, of course. Who well is saying in the old car, slow in this new Jazz. So apparently he hasn't found the pace just yet in this new car, but... One thing drivers have to be careful of as well, Cal, is crossing this white line. There is a certain point where it gives you an iRacing black flag for an improper pit entry. Um, so you do need uh -huh. to be careful of that as well. Can't say that I've experienced that because normally I would stay over to the left unless I was pitting. Um, going nice and deep. Something's happened to Steven Sinkovic, hasn't it? As well what, as Steven that... Caldwell as well. Yeah. Oh, what's Keegan done? That's a very aggressive change of lane there. Steven didn't even know he was there. And just spun it round. Oh. They got through. Yeah, that'll be another one interesting one for race control to have a look at. Have a Gallo trying to put some pressure on Debono. At the moment these three have sort of jumped out about a second on uh, Gowans, who's uh, at the moment he's got his own problems with Scotty Pocock starting to close in on him. So, you know, the, the top five, they haven't completely run away with it at the moment, uh, but Byrne and De Bono. Oh, Gallo's only a second there, but Gowans, he's going to have his hands full looking at his mirrors very soon because Pocock is closing that gap down fast. Look at this, Dean Singovich now back up into P2 in class as he tucked it up the inside of Rossanita. They got Catacazinos all over the back of them. They're just trying to chase down Matt Tessiero, who's currently about two seconds up the road from him. So the AM battle is just starting to heat up. The Pro AM lead, well, the Pro AM lead is about separated by about two seconds. Hodgkinson up to Hudson. So uh, there is a fair bit of uh, real estate between those boys. Oh, the wide run in the back. Who was that green car in the back? Um, I believe. Oh, Dylan DeBono spun it round though at turn one. Oh, no. That's cost him a whole chunk of positions. What's happened here? So he's trying to defend the inside line to Gallo. Oh, and he just yeah, he's yeah, got, he got, got a little a shimmy. Yeah. And then he's had to sort of back all oh, close. He's done well. He's gone to the inside. And this might have been the car you saw run at wide. It's Marcus Kanitska. Uh, no, no. It was, in the lap. it was at the last corner someone decided to get out and jump those sausage curbs. It's the all green car. Who's that out there? Maybe it was Steven Singovich. Now uh, here it is. Yeah, it would have been Steven. Yeah, yeah. must have been. Because he had a massive run over those so that yellow means sausage it curbs. It was a different car that was involved with Keegan Caldwell. It wasn't Kanitska. It wasn't Walker. It wasn't Snailenberg. Wasn't Wakefield or Johnson? Wasn't Matty Gerrard? So who was that mystery green car that Keegan Caldwell managed to find himself having an incident with? Oh, it was Hodgkinson. So it was Callan Hodgkinson. So they okay, were both yeah. way out. I think Keegan was actually leading the class. Oh, I think Tobias actually had another incident here. Um, Possibly. Just heard Callan Hodgkinson with a black flag for. Uh, contact T1 on lap four. So unfortunately, that's hurt him. What do you? What, what was your opinion on that one, Kerry? Of course, it's, oh, race control, it's race control's choice, obviously, and it's race control's opinion. Better have a look at what happened to Schmalenberg just then too, because he was trying to redress the position, and I believe there's some contact that's hurt him on the radio. Might have been here with Sinker. Yeah. Oh. Look at that. A bit of a uh, bit of an interesting move. Singovich just parking the car up for us, giving us a, 
a good view of it. And unfortunately, oh, Snellenberg's also run it wide a bit later in the in the proceedings as well. Not sure you want to be ahead at that last turn, Phil saying, look, that could be right. You think it's long enough. It is sort of a, a bit further than halfway down where the finish line is. So it'd be interesting if it's that close on the last lap, is that toe going to have a big effect? Uh, and at the moment... I just want to show this off. He was quite proud of his work, actually, there get his name on the halo, so I, sure, I thought I'd show it off for him, but he's doing quite well at the moment. He's currently about oh, half a second ahead of Matty Gerrard in behind him, and he's chasing down an absolute pace to Kevin Wakefield ahead of him here. It's only for fifth in class, but, you know, Jono, he, he may not be the fastest oh. driver out there. There goes Gerrard on the inside. Is it drive? That's right, it is too. Nice move around the outside there, two corners. That was a very nice move, but... Jono, he may not be the fastest driver out there, um, Cowie, but he is one that has the biggest heart. Like, he just will continue going for it. He'll show up every week, and he'll always be out there having a crack. So, massive kudos there to Mr. Greg well, Johnson. I've, Great to see him on track. I've mucked around with my eye racing paints and that a fair bit, and I, I realised how much pain in the butt that would have been to get that to line up on the halo. So, it would have been uh, constantly exporting it and then looking in the paint section of iRacing, adjust it a little bit, go back, save it, click it through again, and, you know, that could take you 100 iterations before you get it sitting just where you want. So, meticulous, and great to see him out there driving, and, um, you know, love the look of the paint too. It's awesome. Nice run here. Is that Sinkovic, Dean Sinkovic, making a run up the inside of Tessuero. This is for the uh, class lead. And he's got that done nicely. Sam Catacazinas behind these two at the moment. Hasn't sort of found the pace out there so far in these cars. But um, at the moment, uh, can sit in there. He's uh, you know, got two amps between him and Hutto, who's currently leading the, the, the Pro-Am class. Yeah, there's uh, a little bit of space between him, though, and Hutto. Hutto's about 6.9 seconds up the road here from Dean. So... There's a bit of time for Sam to make up here. He is up 10 positions in this race, though. So even though he started at the back of the field, he has actually had some big gains here through just saving himself some effort, keeping it nice and clean. He's going to get this done here on Tessiero, and then he'll try and get it done on Singovic, I'd say, later on in this lap. But let's wait and see what he can get done here in this race. Uh, Jono is dropping spots at the moment. He might have a slowdown down the straight because he's just given a spot up to Wakefield and to Hodgkinson. So, I'm not sure what's happened to Mr. Johnson here, but we'll have to wait and see. But Daniel Byrne leads the way, Cowie. He's been a dominant performance so far. He's got a nice lead out to his teammate. Just under a second back to Gallon in P2. And the grandpa, Dougie Gowan's in P3 at this stage for Velocity Sim Lab. Dylan Lebono just trying to make up what he's lost here after that turn one spin. Oh, Steven Sinkovic has been black flag for that contact. Um, lump number four as well for Mr. Sinkovic, and I think it might have been the earlier contact, not that one we saw at the end. But, uh, yeah, look, Stephen, his last race for a while is in his house. Uh, wouldn't be too happy with that. At least the sprint rounds, so he get to have another go at it in about... Um, well, it's only six minutes of this race and a five-minute warm-up, so not too long before you can have another go. No, uh, no safety car just yet, Cowie, either. Yeah, look, I don't think I was banking on seeing one in this one, but I thought maybe in the 40-minute we might see one. And as I said to you, I can't say zero. It's just not in my blood. <laughs> I'm trying to take the smarter approach approach this season of, are we likely to see one? I mean, if it's 50-50, I'm just going to say no. Um, if it's 75-25, then I'll say yes, but, um, yeah, I'm just trying to sweat this, uh, this bet that we have going with ourselves, Cowie, that's all. Well, so far, no sign of any weather demons out there for race number one. Maybe we can, you know, throw a few bucks to race control and get them to advance the session about oh, four hours and then start sky, race number two. That sky is looking very dark at the moment, Cowie. So... I mean, they said it would happen after the race is finished, but 
No, no. Can we maybe hope and pray that it's going to come a little bit sooner? A little bit of a lock up there, oh. though, from Katakazino. Nearly causes Singovic to run up the rear end of him here, but very lucky to have that kind of not become untoward. Desiero, though, now up all over the back of Singovic once again. It's a nice little three-way battle, and it's it's an inter-class battle, Cowie. You know, we've got the Pro-Am versus the Ams. Of course, they get scored based on their overall positioning. Um, yep. So, Singovic would like to get past Katakazinos just to get a nice buffer between him and Tessuero and gain some important points on well, I mean, it does mean even if you've got a different class in front of you, you're still racing that guy because, you know, he's got points that, you know, are going to help your championship. I mean, as you said, it's only round five of a 24-round Shadow Series. Like the biggest season ever in Formula One. Look at the right hand tire lift up there and not moving out on Dean as he went through D1. Um, so, you know, look, it's a big long season. I mean, the thing is, if you miss a round, you know, that, that could be where it really hurts. Uh, but so far, it looks still early days and uh, time for people to come in and jump on board. Well, that's it, you know, it's. <laughs> We're five rounds in, but. You could still get yourself a nice position if you're going to get put into the lower classes of AM or Pro AM. Maybe if, you're, if you get put in the pros, then maybe not because those those guys are obviously finishing up the top end of town. A lot more consistency, but we can see a lot more fluctuation of positionings for amateurs. So if you come in early or you come in at this point, you're still within a shout. To be fair, you've got 19 rounds to do well. If you finish inside the top 10, 19 rounds in a row, you could easily make up those points that you've lost here over the first five rounds that you haven't been a part of. Really interesting. I don't know if everyone. I don't even think uh, Daniel Byrne made every round last season either. So, oh, we had to hear Stephen just getting nice. out of the way. He's a lap down. Yeah, he's a lap down. So just letting everyone through. Oh, fairly close to a couple of cars there though. But at the moment things are just sort of leveling out a bit here. Though uh, Pocock and Debono um, looks like Debono's got past him there. Um, so, you know, making his fight back, just his teammate in front of him now. We saw red race as well for the next race, Cowie. Currently something happened to Kevin. Oh, yeah, Kevin Wakefield. Oh, something has happened to him. What's happened? He's coming to the lane. Has he... Oh, he left the pit lane. Has it happened at turn one? Or has he just pulled it up to let cars go past? I think he's just pulled it up to let cars go past. Okay, and it's just said he's crashed because it's a stop. Yeah, I wish, I wish they would uh, help us better understand why that's happening. <laughs> uh, Ross and Ed apparently had an incident as well, but I suspect it's going to be the same thing of him just pulling it up. Although, oh, no, he no. did pull it up, but he pulled it up with style and finesse by giving us a nice little spin. So unfortunately there for Callum, he will drop a couple of spots, but at the moment, Cowie, it'll be Marcus Kanitska on pole position for race number two, if he can stay here in P10, although he is chasing down Matt Tessuero, who may let him pass just to start in pole position for the next race. <laughs> I don't think Matt will be worried about happy on the front row. It's a new level. I know some of the AM guys will uh, are quite nervous when they're on the front low. I know I've seen Steven Sinkovich just get out of the way and let the field through and race where he normally races. Uh, but look, it, it adds a bit of spice. Um, and at the moment, Pocock and Debono, this has been a good battle. Might stay aboard and have a look at this. Uh, Debono running a bit wide there, but he's not letting out of it, so I don't know if there's a slowdown there. Uh, Pocock was just having a little bit of a snip back there that last lap. So big, they gained that big toe down uh, the main straight means that T1, you know, even if you're behind, you lose a bit of time to the car in front through the lap. That that toe is really coming into play and bunching it all back together at T1, which is, you know, awesome to see. Yeah, we released you know, this is giving us a nice little battle here. For the end of the top five for P4 on the road. Gallons has pulled away. Gallo's pulled away. And Byrne is on a run home to get another win. He's got about a minute left. Oh, no, sorry. He's about to end the race, actually. I do apologize. About to get a 20 minutes run. Byrne is going to come home across the line. P1 here 
for not only the pros, but for overall standings. Gallo's going to come home P2 in behind his teammate as they come up towards to cross the line. Big victory celebrations there from Byrne. Gallons is going to come home in P3. De Bono is just going to get home ahead of Scotty Pocock. That'll be our top five. Brad Hudson, after a great performance, will come home six seconds ahead of his next Pro-Am cohort in Sam Carter Casino. So he'll come home P6 on the road. Sam will come home in P7. Dean Sinkovich will get another amateur win for himself this year. He's done incredibly well so far to improve in these cars. Tessio will come home P2 for the AMs. And Kanitska will make up the top 10 and he will start pole position for race number two here tonight, Cowie. Yeah, unfortunately, he, I think he was the guy that um, got a little uh, ex excursion on early at T1, early on in the race. It cost him a bunch of spots, so I'm sure he'd be happy that he's got up in a P10 so he can start from the front and maybe, you know, dictate things himself uh, for the race number two. So, of course, it was Byrne who got the win here. Of course, he started on pole, managed to keep it up the front. Gowan's managed to get past his teammate. It's going to be interesting to see who's going to benefit here from this reverse top 10 start and who we think maybe is going to come into their own here in this portion of the uh, of the night of racing. Well, look, those race times, I mean, we only saw, I think the guys were still in the 33s uh, for the majority of that race. And even the sort of the AM guys were still doing high 33s, low 34s. So, you know, I mean... Reverse top 10 puts all those pros back um, into those sort of, you know, those middle positions. But still, you know, the guys in front of them have still got some raw pace. Though, again, that toe and a big long straight here at Fuji, I'm sure we're going to see quite a few of the pros just take it easy, wait for their opportunity to get it done at T1 with that big long toe. So, Cowie, obviously, race one done and dusted. Who do you reckon is going to be able to rise up the rankings here in race number two? you think we're maybe going to get a little sneaky winner, or do you reckon it might be one of the major players once again? Look, Kanitska has shown pace from time to time. And starting off pole and, you know, having a bit of a gap back to at least uh, Bernard Gallo and De Bono, especially, you know, his other sort of main competitors... Oh, you know, I, I think Kanitska could be, you know, seconds in front and could control this race. So, you know, if my prediction for a safety car goes awry and there's none, he could be in the box seat. Well, I think oh, well, we maybe get a little a little sneaky run maybe from Hutto or, or I mean, Scott Pocock could have some pace when De Bono had the pace. Um... Maybe if something happens off the start line, maybe even a, a sneaky win happens for the likes of Dean Singovich. I mean, who knows? You know, all of it will be answered, of course, throughout this second race. We have got the warm-up session up, no Cowie. Three minutes left in this one. We'll take a quick little break, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back at the end of the warm-up and we'll keep on going into our next race of the night, our uh, feature race of the night. 40 minutes of racing around Fuji to come up. But enjoy the sights and sounds of Fuji while we quickly go on a little break. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back after a quick little break there. One thing that myself and Cowie noticed when we came back was we're getting rain here in the end of the warm-up, and it'll probably roll over into race number two. So 
Cowie, we finally get to um, to lick our lips and wet our whistle a little bit here on the track. We've already seen some drivers making mistakes. This could be a running of full wet. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how the driver's going to be able to tackle this now in this new car because it's the first time we've had this happen for us in the SF24 during official season um, sort of scenario here. You know, obviously we had the, the rain event that we held last season. This is the first time it's actually happened live during a race. That's what you're saying, when the random weather gods have decided to play in our commentator's favour and, and make it rice and exciting. Look, one of the things we saw there just watching the, uh, the practice is on slicks, wet track, and it is really difficult to keep the car straight. So it's going to be interesting to see how much it rains in the rest of this practice period. And therefore, is it raining hard enough that everyone goes out on the wet tyres? Or do some people try and brave it in dry tyres, thinking maybe it's going to clear up? I, th I think you've just got to start it on wets. If there is there, there's a rooster tail, you've literally got to go on to wets, Cowie, at this point. Like, there's rooster tail. You've almost got to be guaranteed the oh. whole field's going to be on wets. And, and apart from the fact that we also know that, you know, slick tyres in the wet is a no-no even for the best drivers in the world. And so far in iRacing, every time I've tried flicks on a wet track, it is impossible. Oh, it's even worse in these cars just because of the power output. But we're going to get into our race here tonight. And it's gonna, we've get, gotten a little bit of spice from our weather gods. They've given us something to bite into tonight or to kind of hydrate ourselves with, if you will. We've got rain on the horizon, but this will be the starting grid, though, for our first wet race of the season. Marcus Kanitska will start pole position ahead of Matt Tessiero in P2, with Dean Sinkovic and Sam Catacazinos making up the second row of the grid. Brad Hudson and Scott Pocock will then start in P5 and P6, with Dylan DeBono and Dougie Gowans making up the fourth row of the grid ahead of the Carlins Motorsport Top 10 lockout for the fifth row. The rest of the field will start how they finished last time out being Keegan Colwell, Callum Rossanita, uh, Matty Gerrard, Callum Hodgson, Martin Walker, Greg Johnson, Nick Schmalenberg, Kev, uh, Steven Sinkovich, and Kevin Wakefield. So it's going to be interesting to see, Cowie, but what a way to send off Mr. Steven Sinkovich by finally getting some rain on track. Oh, he'd be loving it out there. Oh, you cannot the see through race, Well, race control is just letting the drivers know, just be aware of the spray. <laughs> this will be interesting. We're loving it. Look, this is one of the reasons we changed to the super light was to take advantage of all the new weather features for iRacing. And here it is, mate. We, we, we get to see what it's going to be like and see how these drivers can handle driving in the wet. Well, Remember, it changes everything. Changes your brake markers. Changes your turn-in markers. You try to brake where the rubber is. Well, rubber and water don't mix. So you'll see guys taking different lines. You know, it's it's going to be interesting. Well, it's well, it's whether we're going to get a a display of, you know, initial needs, some running in the 90s from these drivers able to control their cars in any conditions, or if it's going to be more like Disney on ice and drivers sliding all over the place and just trying to keep themselves nice and composed. I, I'm telling you now, Hamish, we've got to go on board with one of these cars at some point. Oh, we will. Don't somewhere. you worry. We will. You're not going to see a thing. You're not no. going to see a thing. So, does that now change our predictions, Cowie, of who can win this race? Because it could be all up in the air now. And depending if any drivers have done any wet practice around this well, circuit this week as well. Did you notice that there's a few cars that have disappeared off the grid and they're now coming back on? Yeah. That'll probably be the ones where race control just reminded, uh, guys, make sure you put your wet tyres on. <laughs> and I reckon there might have been a few cars that gridded up and didn't think about it, and they got reminded, went, oh, crap, I'm on slicks. Yeah, well, let's just make sure our leader is on wet tyres. He is on wet tyres. Mr. Tessier is on wets. Zink is on wets. Pocock is on slicks. He's on slicks. Uh, so that's going to be real that's trouble very since Scotty. Interesting. Wets for <laughs> the Bono. Wets for Gallo. Wets for Burn. Wets for Caldwell, uh, slicks for Rossanita, so this is going to be very interesting for him. I think there's uh, a couple of guys wets, that have missed that memo. Yep, wets, <laughs> wets, oh, no. uh, wets, wets, and then wets. So the the real telltale sign is if they have white walls, they're on they're on the wets. If they're on red walls, they're on the dries. So 
We're going to wait for our lights to come up there. We're going to wait to be able to go racing here tonight for the first time in the wet in live series, live championship standings. Lights are up. You can barely see anything. The safety car's on track as well in case Gold anything flag, happens. Flag. It is green flag running. Wet racing going in. You can see already the slick tire car's already lost it on the straight as we come down towards T1 for the first time. There was two cars went hard into the wall there. I think one of them might have been De Bono. No, one of them. It was Gal. Oh, it's, it's oh, Kanitska's Cordwell already off. Well. There, there goes Tessiero Sinkovic as well. Oh, I believe one of them was uh, Gowans and the other was Catacazino. So I believe one of them was on oh. Slicks, quite possibly. Oh, but it's oh already going off. There goes. That was Sinker no. off the track. Yep. Oh, this completely. This completely changes the game now, Cowie. Completely oh, changes chaos. the game. It's absolute <laughs> chaos. Absolute chaos will now ensue. It is Gallo leading oh, the way to look at that big, It was a big lock-up, though. Big understeer, and he was totally aquaplaning there when he went to turn in there, Gallo. And this is what it is like. And, I mean, look, they've talked about, you know, that rain is supposed to be like this in real life. Um, you know, so it's now, you know, look at that, barely trying, gingerly trying to get the car to turn in. It's, again, you know, when you get down near the apex, that's where the rubber's going to be from the previous race. And that's where it's going to be at its slipperiest. So you'll see here wide lines, you know, especially in those big braking zones. T1, we'll have to see how early they uh, they break into T1. And you'll also note, you'll see cars try to stay off the kerbs. But at the moment, Gallo and Byrne up eight positions uh, on lap one. Gerard and Hodgkinson up ten. And wow, <laughs> what a lap one. <laughs> this, is, this, this is what happened just on lap one itself. Yeah, quick, go on board, go this on board, Manny Gerard. Oh, this you want to this look was the start. Catacazinos, okay. just quickly here. This was Catacazinos off the start. So he just lit it up. Oh, yeah, and he tried to move oh. out the way of the car ahead of him. Had nowhere to go. Put it yep. in the wall. This is Dougie Gowans in behind. I reckon similar scenario happened for him because we know that Pocock was on slicks and he was not moving. So Gowans trying to move out the way of him could not get it done. And then you can just see them trying to avoid all the cars in the background. This is Caldwell into turn one. He just locks it oh. up massively into the side of De Bono. That's what happened to De Bono. So yep. yeah, look. And then this saw him tumbling Kanitska down the auto. Oh, no, lead. something's happened to Hutto. Something's happened to Hutto as well. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get all these before the end of lap <laughs> two. Because <laughs> this was Schmalenberg Look at this. One. This is what I'm talking about, though. Like, you can barely see a thing. And I bet you the majority of the drivers were braking right on their dry their dry braking marker as well. Absolute oh, chaos ensued here. Lap one and lap two. The rain has cometh. And it has already taken some victims with it. This was Sinker. He just caught the regular line, and that's what spun him round. It would have been those little rubber, the rubber build up on that section of circuit that would have done it to him there. Well, I mean, it's also, you've got to remember, it's the start of the race, so it's cold tyres. It's cold, wet tyres, too. So, you know, I mean... And we're seeing, you know, guys here losing it under acceleration. Is that... Oh, he's, he's trying to come into the to pits. In, but his steering was broken. Yeah. So that was him just trying to bring it in. So, absolute chaos ensuing at the moment. Burn leads with Gerard in behind and Gallo in behind them. That is the view on board of our <laughs> F3 Champions car. Gerard, though, wants it down the inside of Daniel Byrne. He wants to get it done before turn one. You cannot see a thing in the spray. Oh, you can see Gallo back well off then. Oh, he didn't want to bar he, expe that he, moment. he expects something to go down. And he yeah. does not want to be involved. Maddie Gerard with a great drive. He's got through on Burn now into the front. So maybe Maddie's one of those guys that puts put in a bit of time um, at Fuji here driving in the wet. But it is full wet now. There is no... Uh, those guys that went out on slick tyres, well, uh, I'm sorry. That was a bit of a brain fart. I think back, Cowie, to the race here at Fuji, the F1 race, where it was full wet and it was almost torrential. And I believe it was Coulthard, or shoot, I think it was Coulthard coming around this section of circuit. And it was full spray, and all of a sudden in behind him, 
bang came Schumacher just right up the back of him because he couldn't see where he was and he didn't know where he was. And we're very lucky that the drivers haven't had anything happen to them in that sort of light yet here tonight, but it is already... Oh, it is it is fun to see some rain on circuit in an official manner. This was Hutto. He had another incident here. And I have to wonder what's happened. Oh, he's done the same thing as Sinker. He found the same little bump. Same little slick part of the corner. Lucky to get it pulled up. And this was Ross I think and it's also, I think it's also, if you're trying to rotate the car through there, that's when that rear is getting loose and squirrely on these guys. And here you see low speed is where, you know, you're struggling with the right amount of acceleration. You're going to be so gentle on the throttle. Well, I just Look want to at that spray. Look at it. That is awesome. You cannot see anything from the rear of this car. It's just all spray. It's such a great visual to have now and to have oh, this at our disposal. Knitzel. And it's going to make it a move on Gallo. Nice move up the inside there. So Gallo not really trusting himself in these conditions at the moment. Maybe being um, too cautious at the moment, Gallo? Yeah, possibly. But, I mean, if that's what you need to do to survive out there, then that's the name of the game. See that? Kanitska getting the rear loose. And then he's had to get out of it. And somehow has managed to stay out of it. But he will have a slowdown there. So you'll see he let, um, just lets Gallo through because he had that slowdown. But, yeah, look, that tiny little movement of the rear in the braking zone, and then suddenly you've got to, you know, get out, get off the brakes. If you don't, um, the car's going to loop around, and you can see that Knitzka just running wide. It's actually a pretty good save for that to only cost him one position. And Hodgkinson now hard on the attack as well. Well, Rossendar, he is struggling at the moment to let these guys pass him. And he's struggling out well, of the wet still conditions on slicks, as well. Isn't he? No, no, he's on. I believe he's on dries now. On, oh, oh, no, he's on wet. So I don't believe he's on. On. Uh, no, he's still on dries. Oh, no, they wouldn't have a groove in him. No, he's still. He's slicks still on there. slicks. Is he? He needs to bring. Oh. Hang on, hang on. No, sorry. No, no, he, he can't. He can't be. Rossender. He's, he's, he is, he's on slicks. Day. He's on. Go, slicks go back still. on board. I think go back on board. I don't think there's red oh, walls. No, on that. Look, there's he's a groove. Wet, yeah. yeah, there's a groove. Like there, uh, half the field have all pitted already for repairs. Yeah. And and tyres. So. Oh, uh, Diplano so just asking destroyed. about what happened to him. Oh. I mean, well, look, what you've got here is, you know, the car's going to be skating in those braking zones. You see it. Um, you know, people haven't practiced. If you're braking on. You know, those rubbery lines, the car's just going to slide an aquaplane. If you're trying to turn, like this section up here, you're going to be looking to turn early and just drive straight through it, right? And almost coast it, where so, you're putting as little steering input as you can. Because if you turn a little bit too much, the rear's just going to go on you. A very tricky section in the wet here. Look at that <laughs> slide from Gerard. Deja vu from Gerard through there. You'd and it's going to have put a bit of pressure on Burn. Oh, you'd almost think it was Mount Arkino, not Mount Fuji <laughs> that we're racing at at the moment, Kelly. But a fantastic catch there from Gerard. He's definitely done some practice in the wet. Um, and Kanitska as well. He's, he's shown some good signs here after getting tapped out early on. And now he's um, fighting back. Because remember, he started this race on pole. And he's now fighting his way back. Fighting hard for P2 with Burn. Um, showing a bit of confidence in the wet out there. Yeah, the, he's got the confidence about him at the moment. One thing I think drivers are also going to have to remember, Cowie, too, is they have to actually select to put on wet tyres during their pit stop. They can't just select add tyres. It has to be specified that they want wets, not dries. Oh, oh, oh. So that could also catch yeah. a couple of drivers out, too. Dylan DeBono spun it round, though, as well. He's another driver who's currently struggling out here in the wet, as well as uh, Scott Pocock. He's had some issues, too. You know that he started on the slicks, so oh, it is an interesting night of racing for us. Here. Look at the spray off of all yeah. these cars. What a uh, you, you know what's funny, Cowie? This is going to be a long forty minutes for these drivers, but it's going to fly look, look, by for us based on all the oh, action. Oh, look at up the inside there. Hodgkinson made that three wide going down into T one. Thought better of it on uh, Gallo. But, yeah, look, I mean, this is a great battle here, the top five, these guys. I mean, Hodgkinson, the pro-am on the back end of this. And, 
So, but knowing Callum, he's probably one of the guys that spent the most time of the rain here because he would have been loving this sort of stuff. I, I reckon he's just practicing rain in general. Like he's got practicing <laughs> right. rain in general. Um, yeah. So, and it's now going to pay off for them. And this now is going to be a wake up call for drivers of, hey, I've actually got to practice in the rain in this car, get used to it in the rain, learn how to drive in the rain because this can happen at any point in the championship going forward. So this, this is going to be a massive change of landscape for us, to pardon the pun there, Cowie. What happened to Kanitska? He's back behind Burns, so maybe a little mistake there, and Burns got back through. But this is a great battle here at the front. But you can basically see what's on this lap. Uh, car 10 and down have all been lapped already, or are already well and truly behind. Oh, no, they haven't been lapped. No, but they are. But they Kevin, are almost, almost a, minute, a minute behind. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, yeah, it'll but be because just they've come so. in and they've t they've changed tyres. Pocock's yep. in now to change tyres. Um, King Cobb in the chat saying it happened to me at the start where my tyres are slick, but I changed them to wets. Well, I don't know why it would do that if you've gone off and you changed them back to wets. Then they no, should no, he's wets. saying Gerard's he was slick. In. Well, I'm thinking that these guys have got you know. I mean, generally the way these 40 minute races are working. You know, you've needed to sort of pit to come in for some um, fuel, uh, but only a one-stop and not a real big fill of the tank. Now, the weather just changes the whole, you know, the, the fuel burn, everything changes these. So I'm thinking this might be the one and only pit stop for the race, or it suddenly turned into a two-stopper. No, I, I, but... I agree with you, Kelly. I think, I think it's definitely a one-stop, but... With the rain, it extends your stints now. So one, one example I'll give is, in a GT car, for example, a regular stint might be an hour. When it rains for a whole stint, it can get extended by upwards of half an hour for your stint, just based on how much slower the lap times are in the wet. So what this means is, it means they might actually need less fuel to get home now than what they normally yep. would, because they're going to cover less distance now in this 40 minutes. And I mean, to pick up some damage maybe you can repair that car interesting gerard to uh pitting like debono had contact but maybe gerard had some contact there early on in the race as well so you know once that fuel window's open get in fix the car um you know if you picked up a little bit of damage early i wouldn't be surprised that that's what oh, debono oh no safety that's car right. So right that's now well i couldn't really we predict miss, that we were going to get rain but... what caused the safety car I'm going to check, was it maybe Mr. Pocock? Was this it, maybe? He was coming into the lane. Or he come out of the lane. Did he pull it up, or what? He slid it round. Is he on slicks, then? Is he going on to slicks, no, no, accidentally? he's on wets. He's on wets. Okay. The white wall is the wet. So it wasn't Scott. Or was it Sinker? He's gone off track. Oh, yep, caught the curve. Oh, that's curb. Yep, that'll be it right there. That'll be why we are under safety car. So, I'm, yeah. so, I'm sorry if we're, if we're a little bit off our game here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But <laughs> it's, it's I mean, it is, you know, we are, it's it's brand new territory for us, pretty much, Cowie. Well, I didn't hear the call from race control. I, I, admittedly, I don't have them up too loud because I don't want them to drown me out. But normally, I sort of pick that up. So, well... So far, I've got the safety call, you know, um, number right on the button, but this weather, it's changed everything tonight, though. My, my, prediction, was for race one. my prediction was for race one, thank you. It wasn't for the whole whole night. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you, you couldn't really predict the rain would come, could you? I mean, we thought you know, come after, maybe that's what they meant. Maybe it was, it's going to come after race one and then race two would get rain. Okay, so have Gallo and Byrne decided, well, this shorten, you know, we're, we're doing, we were doing one minute thirties uh, before, and now we're doing one minute sort of 45s pluses. Is that gonna extend it to the point, like also not using full throttle quite as much because that fuel burn will be dramatically less. But does that mean these guys think they can get home? Or is it more of a, um, I don't want to use up a fast repair too early, so I'm going to pit as late as possible in case I've been it. Well, let's do some calcs at the moment here, Cowie. Just uh, we'll, we'll do a bit of a a bit of a Larco right now. So if we go 40 minutes, um, 
times uh, 90, 3,600 seconds divided by 60. So that's, that's no, that's not going to work. Multiplied by 60? No. No, no, no. Times, sorry, 40 times 1.3. 40 times 1.33, which was our lap average. That's 57.2. No. Oh, no, it's the well, no, it's... Um, and um, you've um, got to remember, you've got to change it to seconds. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you get 40 by 60, divided by 90, <laughs> divided by one, what we're we doing, 146, so you would put 106. And that, so here it's saying around 22, 23 laps. Now, safety cars probably changed that. So we are already how many laps in? We're on lap eight at the moment. So I would expect, you know, we get. The safety car comes in this lap. You know, we've taken five minutes out of the race. Um, okay, wave around complete. So it looks like everyone will be getting back on the lead lap. But, yeah, look, I would expect, you know, another 13, 14 laps. I didn't see what the... Hudo actually didn't give me any info this week. So I don't have the fuel numbers around here. But generally... The capacity has been around about 40, 40 to 45 percent. So these things use up about one and a half liters a lap. Um, and if it's a 20 liter tank, so just off some quick calcs there, Cowie. If it was dry, regular running, averaging a minute 33 lap time or minute 34 lap time, we would have gone about 25 and a half laps. Doing the one minute 46s, if we'd gone full green running here in the wet we would have gotten 22 laps out of these cars. So what that says to me is, is they've lost, what, a lap and a bit now? Two laps, Maybe three two, laps? Probably two. So I still think that they are still going to need a pit to get home because I don't know if the rain and if the safety car is going to help them save their two laps that they needed to get home. Well, see, generally the way iRacing works out, a lot of it's... Um calculation of fuel use and that will be based on throttle percentage now you're in the wet you're not going to be sitting on 100 percent throttle like you would in the dry no. so it's just interesting because normally i would expect the car and boys to be right on top of taking advantage of a safety car like that so either and what i think gerard was in front of at least one of them at the time so he's chosen to make the stop and they haven't so it's going to be interesting can they get it home well importantly um, as well though cowie Gerard's only one and a half seconds off the leader. He's back in P4 and he's had a pit P4. stop. So he That's has right. got and a behind him yeah, as well. So they've got a massive advantage now over Hodgkinson, Gallo, and Byrne, who stayed out. So if they need a pit, well, well then all of a sudden it's Gerard De Bono and Johnston, who's the top three. So yeah. it, it, it's going to be an absolute dice roll. But it's uncharted territory. Actually, I apologise. It would be Gowan's P3 because Wakefield and Johnston would also need a pit stop. But it is uncharted territory for us now, Cowie. We have got no stats to go off based on this because we've never had rain in this sort of scenario. Obviously, the more we have rain, the more stats we're going to be able to get for you and the more sort of understanding we're going to have of how the rain works, how it affects the car, how it affects its fuel usage, tyre usage as well and how it will affect our longer yeah. races, our 60-minute races as well. So the more that this sort of happens, yeah. the more we're going to have more info for you. Now, what we need to do is we need to go on board someone like uh, uh, Doug Gowans or uh, Marcus Kanitska sitting in P8, P9. Go on board from the driver's view as this race starts. Because I tell you now, safety car restarts in the rain. The wall of spray is even worse than you would expect. I did one, I think, with the wheelie bins early on when rain first come out, and starting uh, behind the safety car in a bunch of cars, it was just a wall of spray. You had no idea where anyone was. So Burn will lead them away when we get under restart conditions. Race controller Thomas Freeman will pull away in the safety car. And we will get ready to go racing once as again as he here in the wet. <laughs> as long as he doesn't bin it, yeah. I think he has the an excuse car that pulls we're, away. We're, we're in the wet. He has an excuse, so come on. Sam uh, Catacazino is in the chat, so he's unfortunately pulled out of this race saying, G'day, hey guys, great to have you in here, Sam. Unfortunate 
that your race ended prematurely here tonight, mate. You had a great run in race number one. Unfortunately, you uh, couldn't back it up here in race two. He's not out there. He's not out there. No, he's in our oh, chat at the moment. Stuck. He's uh, he's in the lane. So he's uh, pulled out yeah. of this race. And Safety so, man, Tessio Aero's gone. Keegan Caldwell gone as well. So those guys using up their fast repair. And, um, and then the damage uh, coming again. I mean, that's going to be the thing. So, you know, maybe Burn and Gallo are more of the equation like... This could be still messy. There's still 20 minutes to go. I want that uh, fast repair, you know, as long as I can. Whereas, I would say De Bono, he had contact, so likely he's used up his fast repair. Gerard, unexpected to pit once, so if he had any little bits of damage, he's used it up. You can see here Gowan sitting out of the run here. This is a smart Wait play for this Gowan's. Burns yeah. holding them all up because he's going to hope that they spin the wheels up. They've gone green. Oh, Gowan no. just managed to jump Hutto. That might cost him there. Oh. He's had to get out of it and let him back through because remember, he can't pass until the control line. He's let him back through, so he might get away with that as a redress. But that spray, oh, amazing. Have a look at a couple of cars coming into the <laughs> into the braking zone in that spray. It's going to be crazy. They handle it pretty well at the moment. So again, they're bunched back together thanks to the safety car. But Gowan, see that slowdown, that cost him another position as uh, Dean Sinkovich managed to sneak through. So he jumped the gun, had to get out. Oh, oh Dean's lost Dean's it! Gone. Oh, no, again. So tricky to get on the power uh, around that corner. That's what I was saying to you. It's going to almost be a section that you're going to be looking to coast through, wait for the car to settle, then you can get back on it. I mean, driving in the rain... It is, it's, oh, I suppose, you know, that's why we have drivers like Senna and uh, um, I think Hamilton's had that moniker, uh, Verstappen as well as being Rainmasters. Well, will we crown a new oh. Rainmaster here tonight? Del Bono gets it up onto the podium now. Oh, Gallo no. spun it round! And that's, it seems to be the slow oh, speed. Oh, oh, as well. Oh my God. So all of a sudden, their, what they thought may have been their advantage has now gone out the window and Callan Hodgkinson leads this race. Bono's got need... through on him as well yeah. with a great drive he... there, but it just oh. goes to show that, you know, look, um, I mean, this is what the weather brings, you know, the tiniest of little mistakes. Um, and, you know, a, you know, a tiny little moment turns into a big one and you can see that both the Carlins boys there it looks like it's sort of those slow speed corners getting under the getting back on the power and you've just got to be so gentle with the amount of throttle and De Bono having a look up the inside here of Hodgkinson he's going to get this done easily and we see Gerard with supreme supreme confidence getting up the inside there under brakes as well so look Matty Gerard he's showing some great skill out there and so far, he's the one that hasn't put a thing wrong. Oh, and I had to say it. Oh, is you good. did it again, Cowie. <laughs> good recovery there. It was a great recovery. <laughs> uh, just quickly as well, both the Sinkovich brothers have had an incident here tonight. Uh, Mr. Dean Sinkovich, what has happened to him here? Well, oh, he's run it way wide. Is he going to loop it? Yeah. He is indeed. Oh. It's sort of... Oh, that oh, was his brother. That was sympathy. That yeah, was I a think double he might have to, right there. Trying to avoid his brother, I would say. Yeah. But it does go to show, like, you know, normally when you take a wide line, you get on the gas harder and sort of sweep around the outside. Well, you know, that getting on the gas hard, well, that's the problem in the wet. So I think we're seeing here a few maybe lead foot moments. Um, we're seeing Debona here sort of sliding it on entry in mid-corner. And that's where he's pushing hard. But again, I mean, just one tiny little mistake. And it'll throw you out of it there. And we have saw, well, I gave him massive raps. And he goes and makes a mistake in front of camera. I oh, know. Mr. Matty Gerard. Just <laughs> oh, look sometimes. at the wiggle there. Wiggle in front from Kanitska. Look at the spray. Can't see a thing. There's a red dot on the back of that car somewhere. Yeah, I don't. I, they said they updated it. I don't think it did very much, to be honest. With oh, you. you can still see it. No, you can still see it. Uh, this before you get this close, and you wouldn't be able to see it before they did the update. Oh, well, now you can see it. Just be careful under brakes, though. Does Hodgkinson? 
as they come into turn one. Uh, Sam Catechino oh. said in chat, I racing rain and my computer are like oil and water. They don't mix. So oh, no. that's unfortunate. Sam, hopefully we can uh, hopefully you can get some updates soon enough and you'll be able to race with us in the rain more often. But that's a shame for you, mate. Yeah, as I mentioned, had a great run in race number one there. But the iRacing weather gods had another part to play here tonight. We're already past the halfway point of this race, Cowie, and it is, uh, it's just going off. It's going off completely at the moment. De Bono leads the way. Nothing's decided at the moment because no. we know that you can t just tag a bit of the curb. I mean, in the wet, you don't want to be anywhere near white lines. You don't want to be anywhere near curbs. You definitely don't want to put a wheel on the grass. You know, and the other thing is, you tend to, when you're braking at least, you stay away from the apex, stay away from that ideal racing line, because that's where all the rubber is, and that's where the tracks are slipperiest. And you can just see, oh, big slide on exit there. Tomorrow's pushing, but he's not full push right now. He's just trying to keep the car as mobile as possible, doesn't want to hit any of those lines, and that can be... One of the toughest things when you're used to running it out wide, when you're used to running it onto the curb, it sometimes is just so hard to change your driving style on the fly like that and running the go-kart line. It, it can really just pay a, a massive part to play in your mindset going into a race or in your mindset trying to deal with those changes throughout a, throughout the proceedings of a race as well. And since the fast lap of the race, so 144 on that last time by. Well, it's not just that, you know, this is the first league race we've had in the rain. And I doubt it would be the first rain practice that these guys have done. So, you know, because they knew it's a possibility. So you want to make sure at least go out there and, and so you've got some idea how to drive in the rain. But the thing, as you was talking about, we just did a dry run race, a 20 minute sprint before. So the guys have got in their head how the track is been and how they've been racing it you know you get dialed in on certain lines and your braking markers and all that and then the rain drops and that just throws all of that out the window really easy for you to you know make a mistake and break where you broke in the race number one and race number two that's a no-no oh that's a big incident and that might be another safety car cowie well that's bits off uh gowan's car and looks like it might be broken as well. We don't even have no, an appropriate. He's been given or... permission to tow, so yeah, he's off the track. Race, con race control says he's, he's deep enough into the zone there that they can now uh, look. Okay. But that All may right. be interesting to see what race control have an opinion about on that incident, though, as well. Um, but it is the Bono who leads the way to Marcus Kanitska. And Carlin Hodgson, who looks to have a breakout moment here tonight by not only getting P1 in the Pro-Am, but getting onto the podium too. But Matty Gerard is hot on his tail. Greg Johnston leads the amateurs at the moment, Cowie. <laughs> so his rain practice that he did prior to this season has paid off at the moment. He does Let's possibly go. need a pit stop. But if he can make it home without needing a stop, this is going to be a great run here from Jono. Well, he's got Ross and Nita and Schmalenberg, two of his... Uh, uh, class contemporaries racing right there with him. Ross anita has got a nice run up the inside. He's going to have the uh, oh, the side draft maybe there. He's pulled back in. See if he'll flick back out of this draft. Again, look at that. Like car number four in that, you can't even see what, you know, any colour on it. But Ross Anita, can he outbreak Johnson here? He's going for it. Jono went a little bit deeper. Johnson giving, yeah, giving him plenty of room there, Jono. Nice move from both the boys there. Plenty of respect. I mean, Jono's problem was is if Ross Anita locks up on the inside, I'm dead. So he went wide there, gave him plenty of room. But lots of respect, and the guy's driving well. So, again, we see there where it closes up. And that line that Johnson just took there is the one I was talking about, where he took really a, a straighter line through to minimise that turning angle. Good so, battle in the back oh, there with Hudson and Schmalenberg as well. It's, it's, as sort is, of... it's just heating up a little bit, Cowie. Ironically, the track is probably as cold as ice at the moment in terms of track temp. Um, yeah, we've got 19 18. degree track temp, 18 or 19 yep. degree um, air temp. 100% wet. So we are... <laughs> I was going to say, if it's not anything but 100%, I'd be worried. But, um, yeah, it's just... 
is really thrown a thrown a dice roll to the heavens for us pretty much at this point. Hodgkinson though, he has got Gerard all over the back of him now as they come down the straight up towards turn one. Gerard will want to get this done down the inside if he can. Lines it up. Hodgkinson lets him have it. And they continue on to continue their battle. Oh, I thought Hodgkinson maybe lost it there, but he kept it in nicely. Tucked it in, in behind Gerard. Uh, and it is literally who has got, you know, the the stones Cajunas? to push. I was going to say Cajones, <laughs> but I know that I know that um, Singer likes to say Cajones, so I like to say who has the stones to just push their car that little bit more and find that little bit extra grip and push that grip limit. Oh, oh it's that, that Steven Spigovic in the wall over there. Of Steven, there he is on the side of the yeah. track. So obviously he maybe has more Cajones than, uh, than brains when it comes to tackling the wet. Who knows? But... Oh. Look at the race times to Bono in the only man. He's had a one minute 42. Kanitska with him into the 43s last lap. The rest of the field are 45, 46, 47, 50, 51s. So to Bono at the moment is lapping at least a second and a half, a lot quicker than anyone else. And I was a bit closer between him and Kanitska last lap was half of a second. But at the moment, he's got that gap out to 4.6 seconds. And Gerard, who was battling right up at the front that little moment, you know, he's now 12 seconds off the lead. So, you know, it's easy to see how things can change. But De Bono, now that he's out in front, is really starting to set the times. And again, what was that? A, a 1.43.21 that lap against a 1.43.8 from Marcus Kanitska. So... You know, again, taking a, another couple of tenths, also about half a second out of Kanitska then, and uh, taking two and a half seconds out of Gerard. So that early call you did give, uh, make to Bono as your, not your dark horse, but your, um, you know, one to watch in race number two. Well, that certainly seems to be the case. And it's looked like the rain stopped now. Um, I think it may have. I think the rain has stopped. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, close enough. I think we're actually close enough to the end, Cowie, that we're not really going to get the changeover point because it takes quite a long time for the track wow. to dry out. So I think we're still going to be wet to the end, even though there's no rain. It's rained for long enough that we're not actually going to have a long enough changeover point for them to need to go onto slicks. And he, 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 buddy, crushing my dreams here. I thought we have one more sort of twist that we could talk about in tonight's race. Uh, maybe, maybe if it happened 10 minutes ago and we were in an hour-long race, then yes, we could probably get to a changeover point at some point in time, but I think we're too close to the end now. You can see there's still so much rooster tail off cars around this circuit that, nah, you, we're not really going to get close enough, unfortunately, um, to a changeover. It's, it's just, it, unless the sky was on like 12 times um, <laughs> changeover and we started, all of a sudden had like bright, clear skies, bright sun that was drying up the track like a roast chicken, then... That's really the only time I can see that occurring, but a nice little display there on that lap from Bono, who just gave us a nice little rundown of how to tackle the circuit when it is wet oh, and how to keep the car four, nice and clean. 1.42.1 now, so the time's starting to come down by these two at the front here. Uh, but at the moment, to Bono's just keeping that lead, getting almost out to five seconds now over Kanitska, but they're lapping you know, a second and a half, two seconds quicker than anyone else in the field. Last round, last lap of Gerard with a 44.9, Hodgkinson with a 45 flat, uh, whereas De Bono did a 42 and so did Kanitska. So, you know, these two, one and two at the moment, they're re relishing in the rain. Well, Cal, I'd say even though we're not quite at the five minutes left mark, it is actually still raining. Um, even though we're not at the quite yet five minutes left mark, I don't think we are going to get another safety car here tonight, even if there was an incident that could cause one. Just based on the time it's going to take to get the safety car out there, get the cars bunched up, get the wave arounds done, based on how slow the laps are, I don't think we're going to... I think during rain races, we're probably never actually going to see a safety car within the final 10 minutes of the race. Um, unless it's like that track mean is I... absolutely jammed. That means I've got it right. It's been oh, a while yeah, since I've got yeah, it right. At, at this <laughs> point, you would have, yeah. It's been a while since I've got it right, but the Bono at the moment, he's driving well. But you can still see that he's still using as much of the track as he dares. Um, you know, he's not sort of backing out. 
at the moment. He's got a five and a half second to Kanitska. I think Kanitska got caught up a little bit there by traffic. But at the moment, it's now Debono Salou's five second uh, lead with, you know, a little bit over five minutes to go. There is Kanitska. He's now past some lap traffic of Kevin Wakefield. Wakefield just wants to kind of get out of that little bit of uh, of toe there. Not want to run up the rear end of him. Rossanita had some issues here earlier in the lap. I believe he's just spun it round down at this corner. He hasn't dared. Yeah, he's just, just tried to carry a little bit more speed than the car would let him through there. And I mean, that that's the limit that we're talking about. You bring the rain in and that limit suddenly starts coming down. Oh, Sheepy is complaining about uni. He missed this race. And oh, Singovich with another nice movement. So the Spinoviches, well, they've got a bit of an excuse tonight, but... We're um, getting our money's worth. No, we're still getting, out we're, we're getting we're our money's worth out of it. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Sheepy, looks like you're missing out on a great one here, buddy. It's, uh, I mean, we've still got uh, four and a half minutes to go, so anything could happen. But at the moment, Dylan DeBano, 5.4 second lead, still lapping in the 42s as well. Uh, Kanitska is trying to match it with him, pushing hard. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all green sectors in DeBono's favour at the moment. And, you know, I just can't believe that those two... They're lapping sort of two seconds quicker than everyone else. Even Byrne and Gallo are in the mid-40s in mid-pack. They've done well to recover to sixth and seventh now. Um, but... Is this is this maybe, Cowie, is this maybe now the the kind of the, the break in Daniel Byrne's armour? Is this maybe the kink look, in the chain? Yeah. No, nah, look, that was one little moment that cost him. He's been clean since then. But I said, what we're seeing is just those that that tiny little moment. If you don't get it right, it's going to cost you. And we've seen even Dylan DeBono who's leading this race. He had a moment early on in this race in the wet too, all of his own making. So it's not easy out there. And, uh, you know, we're seeing guys sort of trying to find where they can push. But the problem is, you know, when you're behind and you're chasing, that's when you can make those mistakes because you push that little bit too hard. The so Gallo here, yeah, just a bit of white line fever there from Gallo. And that, oh, more damage to that car. Don't think it's going to hurt him too much with only four minutes to go. But still, that's that white line. We talk about it to touch them. And they don't, they're not very friendly. <laughs> no, they are not. They are not, they they're offering a handshake, but in their hand they have a little buzzer that just zaps you when you try to you know, accept the handshake, pretty much. It's uh, not a fun time out there, but the field is now spread out, and I think due to the weather, well, you couldn't really question why it's spread out so much. is just proving that his, uh, his practice in the rain has, is really just helping him paying dividends at the moment. Uh, he's got a nice lead over Kanitska of seven seconds, and then it's a Another 14 seconds back to Matty Gerrard in P3. He's got Hodgkinson still in behind him, but he's not quite close enough at the moment to really put in a challenge to that P1. Wakefield's had a spin up ahead of them. Just pulls it off the track, keeps it out of their way as they come on through into the oh, final this section. Battle of the here. This is going to be an interesting battle for the Pro Ams here because Hodgkinson is staying close here to Gerrard. But look, Kanitska, I think, you know, I did call him as, you know, being able to run away from it from, with pole. Um, this race, but he's shown some really good pace in the wet. So I think out of all of the drivers out there, it's been Dylan and Marcus that are the two that have, you know, sort of found their limit and been able to push them a bit harder than everyone else. And that's why they're running one and two. So as it stands, here as we come into the final minute and a half oh, of the race. Big, oh, that was a big, deep lunge from was. Hodgkinson there. That's and cost he him only too. just well, he only just pulled it up. That could have been a big moment. But it is P3 uh, up ahead of him. And cl the class wins. So I know Callum, he'll be chasing this one hard. And it's not over yet uh, for those two boys. So Ross Anita's had an incident in the background. I reckon he's just rotated it once again down at this corner in the old camouflage machine. Yeah, same corner, same issues for him. But at the moment, it is Dylan DeBono who leads the way to Marcus Kanitska and Matty Gerrard. That is our provisional podium with Hodgkinson Pocock making up the five. Byrne then in P6 on the road. Then it's Hudson 
who makes up the Pro-Am um, podium with Schmalenberg P1 for the M's paired on the road to Greg Johnson in P2 for the class. Walker makes up the top 10. Rostenita currently third in the amateurs back in P12 at the moment, Cowie. Our only non-finishers at this stage in time is uh, King Caldwell, Matt Tessuero, Sam Catacazinos and Doug Gowans. Uh, the rest of the field is still out there. Still 15 cars running here in the wet as Mr. DeBono comes across the line to start his final lap of the race. So it'll be one to go for him until he is classified a winner. Look at this. Tw uh, lap 21, Cowie. We were, almost, we were almost on the money with how many they were going to get here tonight in the rain. Yeah, so uh, what, 22? We thought if it stayed, you know, from the end there. So, yeah, look, that's... Uh, Pretty, pretty good uh, prediction, I suppose, on our part, but it has been De Bono's race. Um, he had that moment early on, um, but since then he's recovered. You can see there he's just finding where, even with this last lap, he's still getting a bit of a wiggle in the rear of the car, but he's found where he can catch it, how much speed he can send into it. Both him and Kanitska have been the two guys that have shown pace out in the wet. Um, though, you know... Matty Gerard and Hodgkinson, that's getting close now. It's down to like 0.6 as well. So only a few corners left here for DeBono. But it's that battle for P3 that we're going to keep a close eye on because that's now half a second, Matty Gerard and Callum Hodgkinson. Well, we're going to have plenty of time to go back and check it out based on the gap from them to the leader. 24 seconds is the gap at the moment. But DeBono is going to come around the final corner. After a race of pure attrition, our first race in the wet and just staying consistent and staying clean as best he could after early dramas, he will come home and take victory here out at Fuji for race number two in the wet for the F1 Shadows, uh, Shadow Series brought to you by Shannon's Insurance for the Formula 3 Nationals. It'll be Dylan DeBono out of P1. Uh, Marcus Kanitska will then come home in P2 in behind. But this was the battle we were talking about. Gerard oh, and Hodgkinson. It's a drag race down to the line. Who is going to get it here? It's Hodgkinson to Gerard. Gerard to Hodgkinson. Who is going to withstand the pressure down towards the start finish line here? Hodgkinson, Gerard. They're changing and swapping positions. Across the line they come. And it's Gerard to Hodgkinson in the end by <laughs> point zero. Four of a second. Zero two nine. I've got the gap. So <laughs> point zero two two hundredths or That's... twenty nine thousandths. <laughs> Scotty Pocock Crazy. will make up our pro podium here tonight. Nick Schmalenberg will then come round the final couple of corners here to take home victory for the amateurs. So we only we only get to talk to four people tonight, Cal. We only get to speak to Dylan to Marcus, to Maddie, and to Nick, since we didn't actually have a full pro podium oh, tonight. Oh, Nick, don't, don't, don't put any commentator's curses on Nick here, because he's still got to get around this last corner. He's done so, though, so um, had about three or four seconds to Johnson behind him. Would have been good to talk to Greggy there as well, but Nick getting the job done, um, and I think it's his first uh, win, class win, here for SRW. If I remember correctly. Maybe one more he's got up before. I think I've had a chat to Nick before. But, no, nah, good result there. And it's going to be interesting to see what the drivers thought about the rain. How much the dry rain, the dry race, number one, stuffed them up for race number two. Well, Martin Walker will finish off our runners home who had not finished the last lap yet. But it was Dylan DeBono, P1. It's, and it's going to be an easy burnout for him here tonight, Kelly. <laughs> There's not much uh, keeping that car stuck to the road at this point in time. Oh. But he is our winner here tonight. Oh, look, it was a... Uh, sound of, she'd be saying it sounded like I was at the horses the way how people were cheering for Matty for P3. <laughs> oh, no. But now, nah, look, what that's a good, good introduction to the full weather conditions here on iRacing. And, uh, you know, again, dry race number one, wet race number two. How much did that affect the drivers? How much? How long did it take them to adjust? Oh, man, that's what we're going to be asking them, um, you know, of, of, what, of what we're after. 
Well, being the first wet race for SRW, I think that's what's going to be on everyone's mind. And, uh, you know, well, we've got Marcus is in the room at the moment, just waiting to see if um, our pro M and M winners can jump in. Might try and have a chat to them first. But look, that was, yeah, that was good to watch. And uh, we saw even the best drivers out here in the field fell afoul of the weather. And um, just goes to show you how, you know, fine the margins are when you're pushing hard. Well, Cowie, could we have asked for any more of a shake-up here tonight? Um, oh. You know, ra race one, a little bit cookie cutter, nice dry running, gave us a good little preview of what dry running is going to be like, and then just like that, just changed whole game. You know, when you thought you knew the game, the landscape changes completely in the matter of moments and everything went to chaos and went to carnage. And it's almost a little bit of Cletus Cassidy about it out there where we didn't know what was going to happen. We had somewhat of an idea of who maybe could take advantage of it, but some, some of the guys who we thought would be major contenders ended up taking themselves out through mistakes. Oh, look, the thing is, is that it's, such a fine margin it would be so easy to make a tiny little mistake out there i mean you know i make mistakes all the time in the dry let alone sort of put me in the wet and uh i mean you know we saw our race winner have a moment early on in the race and he's recovered back to take it take it out so um you know, in the end it's about sort of getting out there doing laps finding your rhythm because in the end, it's going to be that rhythm um, that will give you the confidence to, you know, to, to drive the way you, you need to drive the car. And uh, we saw there uh, several times where we jumped on and had a look at Dylan. And he had the car sort of half sideways or, you know, sort of sliding through the mid corner. And he's managed to sort of keep those wheel the wheels straight, let the car sort of grab the, you know, gather itself up, get the grip again, and then he can push on. Whereas we saw other guys try to go in just that little bit too hard through some of those fast sweepers, and that's where the rear of the car was getting away from them. And once that happens, um, you know, a spin is almost inevitable. Well, what we'll do is we will bring in our drivers here tonight. First off, we will bring in our amateur winner, Nick Schmalenberg. Mr. Schmalenberg, what an impressive win for you tonight in treacherous and... I think that's the only way we can say it, treacherous conditions. What a shake-up for us here to finally get some rain in racing conditions, mate. How was it tackling the the mindset changes of coming off a dry race into a wet race and almost having to completely change your driving style in the meantime? Well, for me, it probably worked out really well because I didn't know the track or the car or the conditions, so I just did the incorrect lines and it had more grip. Well, that's the thing about it here. I mean, you know, if we all have had a go at rain, uh, you know, since it started out in various cars, but, you know, staying off that rubbered line and staying off the white lines and the curbs. So how hard was it coming from a dry race number one to a wet race number two to t tell yourself to stay off the curbs, stay off the lines? Yeah, it's pretty hard. Um, it was took a lot of concentration just to not spin it really and, you know, modulate that throttle through corners and stuff to keep the rear end straight. And then um, I, know I, had, I seemed to get a lot more grip around the outside and where a lot of people were sticking to that racing line and I was able to power past uh, at full throttle. So it was pretty, pretty fun. Not bad for my first uh, wet race, I must say. Well, how was it tackling the chaos, Nick? Obviously, there was just a whole schmozzle of of incidents happening across those first two laps. I know you got caught up in a couple yourself, but I suppose it's better to get yours out of the way early, get out of the of the kind of pack, and then just concentrate on your own race, I suppose, after that point. Yeah, that's right. Um, I was lucky a lot of people seemed to spin and drop it off the start line, so I made a lot of spots up before even turn one, and then it was just uh, avoidance uh, from there on, so it was pretty good, and then unfortunately the safety car got called, I was out in P7 just by myself in the zone, and then the reset of the race just really, uh, I struggled for the first two laps after the, the restart, just keeping the, the car straight, I had a loop, but um, only lost one position, and was able to keep it on the black stuff for the rest of the race and back up to P8 behind my teammate there in P7. Well, mate, it was a uh, tough race, of course, not only for yourself, but for Hutto, but it was a good end to it. Obviously, started out tough for both of you early on, but a big congratulations to yourself on P1. Um, let us know who's giving you and your team the support out there. Anyone else you want to give a shout-out to as well? Um, now's your time to do so. 
Yeah, sure. So thanks to obviously you guys for running the league, admins, SRW and Hull, uh, the JWM SimSport crew uh, for having me. It's great, great team. I enjoy it. Liveries look great. Team's great. Um, our sponsors, Brood Coffee, TW Engineering, Tough Customs, TCR Fabrication, Nulon. Um, you know, special thanks to Wade for these liveries. He puts a lot of effort in, keeps them up to date for us when we're constantly asking. Uh, and then just a final shout out to, you know, my wife for letting me race on Wednesday nights and my number one supporter, Tim Visser. Very good, mate. Well, uh, congrats on the win. Was this your first class win here tonight in the uh, in the F3 series? Yep, first class win with SRW. Uh, it was good fun. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Well, mate, hopefully it's a sign of things to come coming up in Season 2 starting next week. Best of luck out at Round 1 when we uh, go racing once again. And if we don't speak to you, best of luck for the rest of the season. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We'll drag in our P3 on the road and our Pro-M winner now, Cowie in Mr. Matty Gerrard. Matty Gerrard, what a absolute chaotic fireworks display of a race that we got to witness. How was it in the in the seat uh, of a Super Formula Light trying to tackle these treacherous conditions with chaos ensuing all around? Oh, well, it was good fun, eh? As always, good fun, good fun. Um, oh, you, you really had to, to be easy on the throttle, eh? Um, you give it too much and it just wanted to go around. Uh, there was one moment there where Dylan and I were uh, P1, P2, and he braked a little bit earlier than I did, and I just had to hit the brakes and spin it. And fortunately, I didn't hit anything and I was able to carry on. Knocked it back a few places, but it was, yeah, it, it brake too hard, you spin, accelerate too hard, you spin. <laughs> you just got to really feather everything, eh? Nicely. On hey, those you pitted under that safety car. Was that, you know, the, did you have a little bit of damage you needed to repair or thought you needed to get some fuel? No. So it looks like, you know, a couple of the guys got by, you know, without having to stop. Exactly. Um, I don't think I actually needed to in the end. Um, we're coming around the last couple of corners there and I was saying to the boys in Dis Discord that, um, oh, you know, should I pit? Should I pit? Should I pit? Should I pit? And one of them said, oh, you're in P1, so you may as well to be safe. So, all right, I, I trust what you're saying. But I don't think I needed to. <laughs> I so needed to, so yeah. the, the reason I mentioned that first before my next question, because I just wanted to ask what the spray was like in P4 on that restart, because I've done a safety car restart in the wet and you can't see a thing. Yep, you can't. I I want to say maybe they've made some updates since rain first came out and you can see the flashing lights, the, the rain lights on the back of the cars a yep. little bit better. Um, but, you know, you can sort of, you can judge. It's very difficult to see, but... You know that all right there's the corners coming up in x sort of time frame so you can pull out out of the the spray and get your marking uh, your braking marker and get around the corner not too much of a drama but yeah it's you can't see anything if there's a couple of cars right in front of you it's a blackout or a whiteout i should say <laughs> <laughs> so what was uh what was going through your mind with the drag race down the final straight there with uh with callum beside you it's just we were calling it like a horse race, pretty much. Of one is ahead of the other, the other one's ahead of the other. Then, in the end, it was you that got home in the uh, in the podium position and the win for the pro ams. I mean, what was what was the mindset like on that on the exit of the final corner? Yeah, I knew he was going to probably try and attack on the last lap, and so I had to defend. But that really compromised my exit out of that last turn. Um, and I saw him go out a little bit wide, and I was like, "Yeah, he's he's going to have a bit of a run on me." But I've got enough traction to get up and go. Um, and it was just a case of, like, I know he's right there. I'm, I'm going to squeeze him. And watching the replay, he was trying to squeeze me as well. And in the end, we actually had a little bit of a touch and we quickly separated. And I think that little touch might have been enough to actually allow me to pip him at the line. And it was completely unintentional by both of us. But it is what it is, you know. It's that sort of the racing side of things. Neither of us got any uh, X for it. But, you know, it was awesome. It was Good for everybody involved, I think. The stream, <laughs> both of us, all the drivers, great. Well, from what we could see through the rain and through the fog, how we'd be able to test to as well, um, the action was all over the place. We couldn't keep up with all of it, um, but what we did see was uh, some brilliant action, and I think bring on the rain this season because it's going to really roll the dice for us and could really shake up the, uh, the order of things, especially if people up the front are making mistakes like they did here tonight. Oh, it does. Rain really evens it out. Um, I mean, look look at uh, Gallo and Byrne. Um, they are absolute weapons in the in the dry, and had, they're good in the wet as well. But it really allowed, say, someone like myself to catch up and actually get past them. 
Um, and so, you know, us pro-ams and even amateurs are getting further up the field because people are struggling in the rain. And it's, it's fantastic, I think, for, for everyone involved. Is there anything that you might want to ask Matty about before we uh, let him go oh. here tonight? Oh, I'll just give Matty, a, give Matty a, a tap on the back, buddy. It was awesome to watch because you had some great pace there. Um, did you just, you had the confidence, as you said, you were, you were coming in off the, the regular lines and everyone was sort of staying on, on those, uh, you know, those proper racing lines where there was a bit, a bit too much rubber and, and a bit too much water. So, you know, and was that, because we could see that your moves were decisive especially early on in that race. Yeah, yeah. With rain, I think you've just got to have a confidence, a, a lot of uh, a lot of balls, basically, um, and really hunt for that, the dry lines and look for it. Um, you can sort of keep one set of tyres on the racing line, and if there's a bit of a dry patch, you get the other tyres out there, and that gives you um, some good traction and keeps you going. But you've when you're... But going into a turn, you want to get across the rubbery strip as direct as you can. So then you you've got the power down and gone. Because if you stay on it, they they'll light up and they can send you anywhere. <laughs> well, mate, um, thanks for coming over chat to us here tonight. Big congratulations on your P three and your P one in the pro am class. Let us know who's giving you and Velocity Sim Labs the support and who helps get you out on track. And anyone else you can give a shout out to as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, okay, so I'd like to thank Velocity SimLab, uh, Hikoki Power Tools, here to race YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for you guys for putting the league on, uh, for the commentary, uh, Tyson and Race Control, everyone involved in the background with it, um, and all the boys in the Velocity SimLab team. Thanks very much for all your help. Very good, thanks mate. Us. Well, uh, best of luck out at round one, at, uh, round one next week, um, and if we don't speak to you, best of luck for next season as well. Yeah, looking forward to it, guys. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, mate. We will now drag in our P2 finisher in Mr. Marcus Kanitska. Um, it was a good run from him here tonight. We'll drag him in. Marcus Kanitska, well, changeable conditions. Um, very, very treacherous conditions and putting up a hell of a challenge. We've asked all the drivers we've spoken to so far... How was it on the changeover from coming out of a dry race into a wet race and having to change the mentality of driving and how you attacked this circuit? Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was a wild race. I mean, I think I should have changed my mentality a little bit more because I spun in the sprint race and then I spun on lap one on the, the feature as well. So uh, I don't know. It's hard to really it's hard to really say. Like you just gotta you just gotta drive the as best you can to the conditions, I think. It's um, you've got to sort of forget a little bit about all the chaos that's happening around you and, and, and focus on the track and, and, try and uh, try and adjust quickly. Well, sort of, the, that sort of once the safety car went out and that, it was just a two-horse race there between you and Dylan. You guys were doing sort of one-minute 42s, lapping a couple of seconds quicker than everyone else. Was it just a, a good you getting in the zone? And I, we could see you pushing hard, but Dylan just had a little bit in reserve. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, I was I was pushing pretty hard once um, once I got into second, and actually, I thought I I thought I caught up there pretty quickly and got got into second, and I thought maybe oh maybe I'd pace to chase him down and um, started putting together some some good laps, uh, but he was just like every lap that I went quicker, he went quicker again. So um, yeah, hats off to him. He drove drove an awesome race, but yeah, that's it. Like the quicker you can get into your groove, the quicker you can start finding some pace. So. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's the key. Is just find your braking markers again, and and then go back to that that um, basically that practice mode of just trying to you know get another meter of braking here, another meter of braking there, maybe get on the throttle a little bit there, explore some lines. Yeah, it's it's tricky. And the vision out on track, like that spray, pretty horrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get out of the spray. Uh, I, I found that. I think a lot of people were driving a little bit too sort of in line, especially back in the pack. And I just, you know, it, there's plenty of grip on the inside and people are taking it easy on braking zones anyway. So I think just getting out of out of the wheel tracks of the car in front of you is the best thing you can do. Well, how was it? Um, uh, like, does this give you now any confidence going into next season, knowing that we've got some wet racing to come possibly, you know, We've already have had it happen outside of the regular season. 
coming into season two, we know rain's going to be a possibility. Does this give you any confidence going forward, knowing, hey, I've already got a podium under my belt in this sort of weather? Does that now help you feel a bit easier when driving in this sorts of weather or even into changeable conditions going forward as well? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, I, I've done a lot of dirt driving and it actually feels quite, well, it's kind of similar mentality to, to dirt driving. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I, I think I'm, you know, you know, pace pace delta is probably better than what it is in the dry. Um, got a podium two weeks ago at Suzuka in the dry in the new car and then again tonight in, in the wet. So, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good going into season two for sure. I was going to say that, Marcus. So it seems like you know you've uh, you found a, a nice marriage here with the super light. Um, I think you know the guys have said it seems to be a bit easier car in the corners, but then the weather that's going to change everything up. But um, you know it's good to see you in the in the mix and taking the fight, mate. Just those spins, you have got to get out of your game. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, I just gotta gotta stop spinning and uh, gotta gotta qualify too, man. Like I I just feel like I just don't have that. That, that outright pace in, in qualifying and it just makes makes me have to do all the hard work in, in the races and I think that's what put the pressure on and that's where the spins come. So uh, a few things to tighten up and we'll be there or thereabouts, I think. Well, mate, congrats on P2 here tonight. Let us know who helps get you and Pace Syndicate out on track and anyone else you want to give a shout-out to as well. Um, and also best of luck for, for next season because it's going to be a wild one. And if we get any rain, well, I think your name's going to be in the back of our mind for a good finish going forward. Yeah, thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, just a big shout out to Worm Paints and, uh, and Jam Motorsport and the boys at Pace Syndicate. Awesome, Marcus. Well, well done tonight, buddy. Um, it was a great, Great race. We, at, we When I saw those lap times and you and Dylan sort of lapping a couple of seconds quicker from the rest of the field, I thought you guys were on it. And it certainly proved to be true. So congratulations, man. Perfect. Thank you very much. Oh, how good was that, Hamish, man? Oh, Look, <laughs> good battle. Phenomenal. He was pushing hard. Let's bring a Dylan in our race two winner. Um Dylan, uh, how was that, buddy? It looked like it was fairly hectic there at the start and, uh, you know, spray everywhere. Yeah, it was pretty crazy at the start in that race too. Um, got taken out, went to the back of the field, uh, had a fair bit of damage and just tried to, tried to push on and keep on going. Um, and, yeah, came out, of, came out on top. So was that, was that pit stop uh, under safety car, Dylan? Was that to fix your car up and just get your head back down, get out on track and try and push on to, to get up to positions you needed to gain back? Yeah, mate, it was, uh, my car was, car was toast. Um, I wasn't sure if I, wasn't sure if I had to pit for fuel. Um, I put, I put a little bit of fuel in, put five litres in at the stop just to be safe. Um, but mostly it was just to get a fast repair and, um, reset and just try and push on forward. So does this and give now, you, um, just quickly, sorry, Kelly, does this give you now some confidence going forward in wet races, knowing that you've got the pace in you and the consistency to try and keep it clean when you're not around anybody out on track. And if you can have a breakaway moment, you could end up coming out on top again. Yeah, mate, for sure. You know, I feel like the two two boys, Gallo and Daniel, were a little bit, little bit faster than maybe a couple of tenths in the, in the dry. But, um, yeah, I just tried to put my best foot forward, stay consistent in the wet. Um, and, yeah, I've done a fair bit of, fair bit of practice in the rain now. Um, and, yeah, it's starting to pay off. Well, it seemed to be sort of one of those things where, you know, as the race went on, you, you settled into your groove and you, you found more pace. And, you know, as I said to Marcus, you know, you and him were lapping almost two seconds quicker than the rest of the field there at times. Was it just about, you know, uh, we could see you sort of sliding the car mid-corner and those sort of things. So uh, Marcus mentioned it was a little bit like driving on the dirt. Was that similar mentality for you? Um, I think it was... The going back to the two seconds lap, I think that helps when you when you're out in front on your own air. You know, like you don't have to worry about um, people bombing or spray or stuff like that. So that definitely helps. Um, the the thing about how slippery it was and being on dirt, um, I think it's just about picking your lines um, and just making sure you get next. Um, I think that's the the big thing, especially in these cars. You know, it's got a fair bit of power, um, and you just got to. Just going to pick your exits, uh, straighten them up, and, yeah, just find the right lines. Well, I did say at the start of tonight's, or before race number two, Dylan, that you were going to be one of my little dark horses to 
kind of sneak on through and get into the, one of those beneficial positions and you ended up taking out the win here in the wet so uh, you paid off for me in the end but a big congratulations to you Matt on another win um, hopefully this can now continue your run forward and continue bringing some momentum into season two uh, let us know who helps get yourself and Velocity Sim Labs out on track and anyone else you want to give a shout out to as well yeah firstly um, like you said the Velocity We've been pushing forward lately, um, developing new things, uh, testing a lot of uh, new setups and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, those boys over there, Haikoki Power Tools, here to race YouTube channel uh, for things in the league, you know. You guys are streaming it. And, yeah, it's going around. Very good, mate. Well, uh, best of luck in Season 2. Um, hopefully, you can get a full season under your belt and bring some challenge to Burn and Gallo going forward. Um, and best of luck out of Round 1 next week as well. Hopefully, uh, you can continue this run going forward. Yeah, cheers, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Well, Cowie, after a wild, treacherous and, you know, different sort of night of racing here. Oh, cracker, where we... mate. It was an absolute cracker, wasn't it? It was uh, it was phenomenal to see. Um, one that, you know, we thought, oh, there might be rain, but then they said it wouldn't happen until after the race, and then it ended up being it would happen after race number one. But what a great preview to how changeable conditions can really shake the dice, change the landscape, whatever cliches you want to say, how much this is going to really challenge the drivers this season and how many more drivers this could bring into contention for our championships going forward, not only into Season 2, throughout the rest of the Formula 1 shadow season, but also into Season 3 and 4 later in the year as well. Well, look, it's the, you know, the main reason that we retired the old F3 car and went with the Super Light is because of these, you know, the, the new rain feature and the, just the whole weather the tempest weather system i racing calls it but we wanted to take advantage of that we've got the gr86s that are also one of the cars that are updated for that so you know there's going to be those two series and then you look at the gt3 your ims are on a friday night so you know the v8s are lagging behind not having the rain yet so let's hope they get it next um season or let's hope the gen 3 comes in fully rain equipped but you know uh, SRW three nights a week now we could have you know showers every week we could and we could <laughs> we could be, we could be cleaner than ever Cowie based on how many showers we could be getting but it's going to be a massive <laughs> season two to come ahead obviously signups are still live guys you have still got until next Tuesday before round number one to get your signups in if you want to start the season at round one of course you can sign up throughout the season but there is a certain point in time where the signups do stop uh, as we currently stand, we are guaranteed to get Tuesday Warren and Brown Tools Supercars Series uh, happening with the Pro-Ams and the Amateurs. The Wednesday Formula 3 Nationals brought to you by Shannon's Insurance. The Thursday Shannon's Insurance Toyota G086 Nationals, which is also brought to you as a Motorsport Australia official series, as well as the Friday night IMSA Shadow Series brought to you by Warren and Brown Tools GTP and GTD Action out on track. It shadows the officials. And, of course, our Sunday night Warren and Brown Tools V8 Supercars Pro-Am uh, if you guys would like the Motorsport Australia Formula Vs to continue, then sign-ups will need to start happening and we'll need to get to a certain threshold prior to the uh, to 12 a.m. on Monday morning. So it'll be 11.59 Sunday night will be the cutoff. If we don't get enough drivers signed up for that series, unfortunately, it will not go forward. Um, so if you want to race Formula Vs, then get in and get your sign-ups done. Otherwise, uh, we'll just be sitting with F3 action on Wednesday nights going forward. Uh, but be sure to as well to hit the like button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe and the bell icon as well so you are notified anytime we go racing as we come into Season 2 starting next Tuesday night. It's going to be a massive season ahead with rain, with different drivers in different series, uh, different championships going forward. It's going to be absolutely amazing to see. So you do not want to miss out on any of the action here on SRW TV. Thank you so much to Kerry for joining me once again. Um, I cannot wait for this next season, mate. And it's going to be absolutely phenomenal to have you back in the booth for the F3s on Wednesday night. But from myself, Hamish Monroe, and from Kerry alongside me, we thank you for your time. We thank you for joining us here on SRW TV. Big thank you goes out to all of our series sponsors, Shannon's Insurance, Warren and Brown Tools and Motorsport Australia, our title sponsors, as well as Groom Industries, Neuropower, Shunt Scenery, 
and DSL Rail Services as well for supporting the series. I appreciate your time for being here with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night for the Warren and Brown Tools Viet Supercars series right here on SW TV. But until then, stay safe, drive safe, but drive hard as well. And until then, bye for now.